Hey everybody. Hello. I hope you had a good Easter weekend. Welcome back. Uh, Monday. So it's uh, great to see you again. I hope you guys had a fantastic weekend with family. Uh, we definitely did, I'd say. We had the kids over yeah. yesterday. Well, our oldest, of course, are the two li living here, uh, our 20-year-old. And we had also had some more family as well, and they brought over their baby. And uh, yeah, it was a pretty nice weekend. It was nice to get together. Yeah, it, it's a nice break in between the school days as well, especially for kids because our two youngest ones are still going to school. Uh, so it's a nice long weekend. Uh, they get to have extra days off and we get to have them yep. uh, for a few more days just to spend with family. And we love them and it will be nice then when they go back. So it makes everybody appreciate being home and then when we get them back on the bus. So. <laughs> uh, they are a joy, don't get me wrong, but... I think if you are a parent, you understand that everybody needs a break sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hello there, uh, uh, the uh, people who already are in the chat. I can see already a few. Uh, so uh, a shout out to Silver Army Guy and uh, our previous live guest, Railroad Preserver 2000. Hi. Hey guys, how are you doing tonight? <laughs> Jaded Diva <laughs> and Bottle Caps. Oh. Uh, I there we go. Sorry, guys. I forgot to bring up the chat window, and I want to see as well. Hello, as everybody. Uh, uh, oh. We see that Railroad mm -hmm. Preserver has been very busy through the weekend, been uh, doing some video filming of trains. Yes, yes. It's good to see you guys were out, even on a holiday weekend. Lots of dedication. My hat's off to you guys. <laughs> and uh, if you still haven't seen our previous live, please go over and watch it. We'll have the link below. Uh, you can uh, watch uh, a Railroad Preserver's uh, a little interview with us yes definitely about history travels and trains and uh also uh our feature of bottle caps uh video that's right uh, so if you're interested in that mm. just head over or afterward just look at the link below train preserver you did very well it was great great to have you on the show um you were kind of our first official guest we had james on and no offense to james from i'm a creator James is kind of an old hand at it now and kind of baptized all of our channels and kind of gives us all new. Yes, and I will shut my phone off as I. Somebody tell him how awful <laughs> this alarm or song is. But the train guys will love it because it's actually a diesel horn when somebody calls, but definitely not during a live stream. So there we go. That's fixed now. My apologies. By the way, how do you deal with your uh, uh, spouse's knickknacks? <laughs> <laughs> For example, the ringtones. Yeah. <laughs> my solution, mm -hmm. I put a cow's moo on my message. Yeah, it was lovely. It was really a dream come true. <laughs> so now all bets are on. Who is going to be the first one taking their ringer off? Yeah, yeah. And that's all I always forget. Yeah, I've got it that one. You the betting right on in yeah. the chat. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, Joe, I am here. I could not miss. Well, we could not do a show without you. You're always such a pleasure. Also, once again, everybody, I hope you have checked out each other's channels by now. We're all mostly now part of the I Am A Creator movement. Um, Please it, don't forget to share on Twitter uh, so we get more people in. It's just going to be more fun. Yep. Uh, we are going to have a special guest later on this evening. So please tweet it out and shout out to everybody uh, who can tune in and get their mon Mondays a little bit brighter. <laughs> my husband is a point, so I have a kid. My husband is down home yet, so I have kids running up <laughs> right now. <laughs> oh, don't worry about that. We're That's pretty, okay. yeah, we're pretty loose format here as well, and, and uh, not to stress it. So, but we understand completely. By the way, welcome. This is our uh, guest later yes. on. Um, we're very excited to have her. She's a fellow Canadian. Very proud of that. Not that we're not open to the guests. We want people from everywhere, and we definitely want to start doing this more, having people from everybody. Ah, ATGH Travels, welcome. Hey, channel, hello. Eric, Eric the Red RC, you got to check this guy out. He does this amazing, uh, it's hard to explain. It's with RC cars, high-end ones, uh, super powered, supercharged. Have you seen some of them yet? I think I showed you two, the one where he's yeah. racing the park. Yes. Where he, that goes right for the pole at one point. All shot from the perspective of the car. Drones as well. And... Um, he does these blooper reels he's been saving all year kind of like uh, from a little series he's making. And the blooper reels are better than a lot of the stuff I get to see anywhere else. I keep telling them, like, <laughs> they, they do features on, the, on their own. Definitely. Jada Diva, welcome. It's always great to have you. Looking for another beer review soon? 
This guy puts a lot of work into his. I like the feel. It's, it's so just sitting at the end of the tail. The beer review. There's a couple of us, and a couple of them, the I creator, and I find they're all so. Um, I don't know if I'd use the term like uh, like welcoming, and, and especially his. He's very he's very comfortable in front of the camera. Always makes you feel like you're just sitting down having a drink with him. And maybe someday we will get to have a drink together. That would be an amazing collaboration. Hint, 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 hint. Oh, Terrell Emerson TV. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You've been a great supporter right from the get-go on this wall in these live streams. Uh, by the way, we are creating our own uh, playlist for the biggest uh, and strongest supporters of our channel. Yes. Uh, so please uh, check it out if you're there. If you're not there, leave us a message. Um, Definitely. And a lot everybody that's here, we would love to have you guys on the our format, I'll let you what know now that we've been doing this a couple of times and definitely not professionals yet by any sense, but it's uh, we're starting to feel more comfortable, is to start doing almost like having, we want to have guests and we want to really discuss things, not not just on one factor. Uh, we don't want to just discuss uh, your work or personal or the I Am Creator movement. We really want to do something that's a nice feature where we sit down and just get to know each other that's on here. Have a chat. Tell us about, you know, you don't have to open up everything in your life. Of course, we got to keep some things off of YouTube. But just a feel of what for what got you into what you do, why you chose that, you talk personal history, anything you'd like to share. Uh, it really is a lot of fun because we're getting to know each other's channels so much and supporting. But there is another level to it and that's what we really want to tap into and we're getting it more refined we're starting to plan out more what to do we're starting to look at ideas and how to make segments out of it uh loves just spending time with you guys definitely because I, as i was mentioning in our previous live streams uh it's uh more than just channels uh, that we're interested in um, it, we're actually even more interested in people behind them. Definitely. Uh, obviously, channel is how we get you to, to know in the first place uh, most of the time. Uh, but we want to know who you are. And we would like other people to let know amazing things that you're doing besides the channel as well. Because after all, uh, it's people behind the channels uh, that are important. Yep. And like for us, what brought us here was inspired by our... Uh, Xenia is Xenia's photography and please guys please go check her out on Instagram and Twitter I mean it's all of our, our group but together but you've got to check out her work on Instagram Facebook uh, I have a new video coming I'm just uh, doing the final edits onto it uh, I think I showed a little bit of backstory onto it uh, the last time we were on it's about Jungfrau which is the, is the highest point in Europe and it's actually accessible by train and you start off in Grindelwald, you take a train that literally goes about for maybe half a kilometer, drops and goes down about 1,500 feet right to the, the bottom floor of the Alps, the Burmese Alps, goes up right up to the end of the tree line where you switch to another train that takes you right to the summit. And when you walk out of the train station, you're, of course, it's mostly tunneled at the end, you walk up to the observatory, you're over 11,000 feet in the air. And uh, these are also photos that we did. The last ones you've seen from Europe, I wanted to make that series, and we're definitely going to make it. It's going to be a scheduled series because there are so many great photos. And Xenia's work is second to none in photography. You really, really got to check it out. Please become a subscriber. Uh, join up with our Twitter, our Instagram, uh, Pinterest as well. Yep. Pinterest. And it's all at Pusa Studios, uh, so it's the same handle for all the major social media networks. Yep. Uh, it's easy to find. All the links are also included in all of our descriptions for our videos. It's, uh, it's nice to network in all of these areas, and we're, that's where we're kind of a rounded group. And as we always said before, the more video with Xenia and myself, the, the videography. And I definitely want this platform to push that size well, just as her platform is to help push what we have here on YouTube. So. Uh, so you all have noticed in the afternoon, uh, YouTube uh, got uh, shut down for a little bit, <laughs> yeah. and maybe, maybe we found a culprit of it, uh, since uh, Joey is saying that he binge watched our videos today. Yes, <laughs> and he might have been the one that shut down YouTube today. So, 
Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Not for shutting down, but you too, for watching our videos. Yes, very much so. Yeah, you guys, there's so many great supporters here. Hey, Joe is just, he, he's got this energy, and I love what he's bringing to the table. Uh, there's, I could talk about each one here, and that's why we want to get you guys on here and really talk about all these great things that you guys do. Eric the, Eric the Red was so amazing. I mentioned him once more again because when we first connected, he wasn't part of the I'm a Creator movement as far as I'm aware of. And he was very... I love the way he stated that, you know, he wasn't just looking to have everybody sign up and like mine and like yours. And I'm like, he he said he had been down that road previously, you know, and he, he was more, he had made a, a circle and he connected with people and he was kind of good there. And if people came, well, that was great, but he wasn't ready to go into this big, uh, just a trade for trade. And I respected that. It kind of actually was at a good time because the I'm a Creator movement, we kind of all went to the corral like wild madmen sometimes. And not saying that was my intentions, but it was a sobering moment. And I think him and I have all built like kind of a good connection from that. And that's what we're looking for. I, this is why we do this uh, live stream as well. It's all about a good connection. There's all kinds of fly-by-nights out there. I mean, you all know we're all pounding the same pavement. We see it every day. And, you know. and thank you uh, very much again uh, for coming. There are 15 of you right now. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, we hope that uh, we did brighten up your Monday a little bit. Yep. Um, Eric Reds and uh, uh, not don't know much about Creator. I'm most certainly a Creator. Everybody's a Creator here. And that's what's cool about this, because some of us came because we wanted to do video, do video editing. Some of us wanted to do photography. But the majority of people that come here aren't so much for that. They come here because they have a story to tell with a, a hobby they're into. They're all stories. And that's the funny part is everybody has to learn this video and photography and analytics and how to work in YouTube. And then they have to get Twitter. There's so many things that come with coming into YouTube. When they first originally usually came was just to tell a story that they were interested in that was a part of their lives. So you really get to have many hats here, and most didn't come in for that reason. And it is a big learning curve to really, really get into it. There's a lot of stuff. But you guys take the bull by the horns. You're here. You've got hundreds of people, thousands of people watching what you do. Oh, uh, Life with Ken and Jane. Ah, uh, Welcome. Welcome. The, the hit and run guys were killing me, with, and then I stopped paying attention. Yep, that's right. That's right. I mean, I'll never turn anybody away from my site. Uh, I, I never would, but I'm not going to chase myself. But when you take Eric the Red, that's why I brought him up as a good example. I think we ended up that night typing like 20 t uh, messages back to each other, almost like two paragraphs long. And that's why I'm so glad to have him here tonight. Because that's a connection I know I'll have for a long time. And I know he genuinely, genuinely appreciates what we do and the same we do with him. So, uh, For sure. Uh, and I mean, we can't deny that even uh, the, mm -hmm. the come and run or kill and run, <laughs> or whatever you want to call them, uh, it, as annoying as it is, it still constitutes part of uh, <coughs> getting to that th thousand, Yeah. unfortunately. Uh, we still need that. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, what you know, most appreciated is those who co keep coming back and, and are checking actual videos because that's what is most important. The numbers are not the priority. As uh, Life uh, with Ken and Jane was saying that uh, they didn't even know the money is involved at all first. Mm -hmm. And that's right. Uh, mm -hmm. We didn't start this because we wanted to be YouTubers. Yeah. <laughs> We didn't even think of doing live streams up oh. until a week ago. So <laughs> I st we still kind of don't know if we fit into it. It's a weird feeling yeah. sitting here. We keep thinking that the real people that should be doing this are going to walk at any moment, and we're just holding the set. That's right. Like yeah. Eric the Red says, didn't have time to make YouTube a job. However, enjoy the connections. Exactly, because it has opened so many doors yeah. to so many great creators and connections, even in real life, with, uh, especially for us, uh, to connect with Canadian uh, creators, as you will see later on as our guest, uh, and yep. also a Joey. This is going to be back in five minutes. <laughs> uh, that is probably the closest.
closest to, to us and uh, maybe we'll even do a, a live video so to say collaboration yep. not, not just uh, in a chat and answer the channels so that's amazing it definitely as much as the apocalypse was bad for the channels who were hoping to earn money with it uh, I think at the end, we all benefit from it because we got to see so many amazing creators but that otherwise would be just under the ground somewhere. I see life uh, with Ken and Jane. I would like, I would love to do live, but I don't have a clue how. There's actually, let me look tonight. There's a, I think it's Ray, uh, oh my God, uh, the guy that does all the streams and I'm a creator. There's a lot of them. I can see his name, Ray, and I can't God, I forget his last name for the life of me. We're seeing now we're almost, we're so close we're on first name basis. But let me look tonight for the link and uh he explains it very well and I'll send it over to you. Uh, our guest says um, uh, that uh, this is her first live and she's very uh, nervous. Let's uh, all encourage her yes. and say that there's nothing to be nervous about. Ray Hayden, thank you, life again. Yes, thank you. Uh, it's nothing to be nervous no. about. Uh, uh, we're also still nervous. It's only our fourth yeah. live. Uh, so, yeah, we're... <laughs> You're, like, yeah. <laughs> you're gonna be great. You're gonna be awesome. So don't worry about that. Remember when you were young and they, your parents brought you out camping or something? They said, "Don't worry about the animals. They're more afraid of you than you are of them." Well, we're probably those animals today. We're probably more afraid than you are. So don't. It's gonna be fine. We can do this together. It's it's about having fun with it. Uh, hi to Dad, <coughs> Dad Piranha. What's yes, up? welcome. Another another Canadian. My God Almighty, this is a. Uh, July 1st all over again, so which of yeah. course is Canada Day. Um, Eric the Red is asking about my accent. Yeah, I was going to mention that because he's first uh, generation Germany. I just found out, I think, German uh, two or three days ago, and I was meant to tell oh. him about that. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm originally from Latvia, which is Northeast Europe. Uh, if you're not familiar with that region, it's in Baltic states, uh, sandwiched between uh, Scandinavia and Russia and Poland, there are three little countries, Estonia, Latvia, and um, Lithuania. Uh, Latvia is in the middle of it, right by the Baltic Sea. And that's where my accent, I guess, is coming from. I have lived in Canada for almost 10 years now. Yeah, 10 years, I guess. Yep, it will be 10 years next year. I th I, no, yeah. Yeah, 2008, right. True yeah. enough. God, the time uh, flies. <laughs> wow. Uh, so, uh, so English has become my... Uh, uh, main language uh, in dreaming, mm -hmm. in dreams and thoughts, and everywhere around. <laughs> she does speak some a bit of German, don't you? Still, or you probably don't remember. It's I been a long it, time. I, I can maybe say a few mm -hmm. sentences. I used to, I used to learn. Uh, yeah, I could talk a little bit, but uh, I haven't used it now, like forever, for more than ten years now, at least. So, <laughs> Latvian is a very hard language to learn, and it's very specific. And even each word, depending on the tense you use it to, can be spelled completely different. And uh, she was teaching me how to speak it, and I, I gave it my best. No, I shouldn't say that. that's not that's not true. I I wanted to, I was interested, but just a lot of stuff going on at the time, and just the age was <laughs> don't want to be taught anything, I guess, in a way. But I, the only word I or, well, I remember some words. Mm -hmm. My favorite will always be turtle because I thought there's no way on God's green earth am I ever going to remember how to say it, and it's one of the only ones now I remember. And turtle is Brunio Rupertus, right? Yes. And that one I'll never forget, I don't think, just for that simple reason. <laughs> yes, uh, it's very complicated. And yes, obviously, uh, Eric, uh, the writer, if uh, you have German roots, you know where Latvia is. But uh, most of the time when I mention uh, uh, where I'm from, uh, a lot of people don't know where it mm. is because it's so tiny. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Um, once again, for everybody, I oh. yeah. For those of you who missed in the previous uh, live stream, Andrew was showing uh, where it's located. So yeah. for those of you who don't know and haven't seen it before, that's where I come from. Sorry for the pin markers. It's just because I typed in Riga quickly, but that's the capital of Latvia. So roughly, it's just by the, the it's a port city. It's been a port city for two thousand years. Oh yes, years. yes, definitely. It it was a major trade port because it was a great access to the mainland farther on. Eric the Red says that his father was from uh, Gdansk. Oh, my God, oh, <laughs> the world small. is small. That's amazing. 
That's amazing. It would be interesting probably to hear all the stories that he have to say. Uh, love to have you on the stream and yes. hear more about that. I Shall told we? him that today and I definitely want him on. And I was hoping he would hear you talking because then you'd hear the connection because I think he's still a bit shy and I'm not sure why. So Yeah. James Cox in the studio. If it wasn't for Twitter, I would not know you guys were live. <laughs> And that's why we're tweeting it out. <laughs> and everybody else, please tweet it out. So people like James Cox knows that we are alive. Like James Welcome. Cox, who preaches to us to do things on Twitter. That's so that right. just shows how much we were listening. Yeah, we're you? 18 people watching now. So come on, we can get it more. Our guests will be on soon. Yeah, so. let's support our guest. Uh, she's and like, coming on. And like we want all to want to tell her not to be nervous. There's no need to be nervous. This is as chill as it can get. A uh, train man, hello again. You have been a mm. regular uh, uh, watcher of is it the right word? Yeah, that works. Yeah, and by the way, if I do uh, have some mistakes, uh, please don't mind me or even correct me. I actually don't mind that at all. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I think her English is better than mine, so she's being too, too, uh, too uh, not high enough on the compliments. The only time Xenia is funny is if she gets worried about something, not yeah. worried, but um. Uh, Stressed. stressed about something then we hear some expressions that never quite had made it to television before but they make for good fun yeah if I, if I start talking about sayings about the, like hedgehogs in the fog and yeah, things yeah. like that uh that might be a little bit worrisome <laughs> when, the, when the blender and the oak tree kiss you can expect snow in june type of stuff <laughs> there's some expressions that just never quite translate yeah well. the same as with jokes you just can't <laughs> translate them but that's what i love about her <laughs> uh, andrew is showing now again uh by the way, who can spot the... The Waldo. <laughs> <laughs> I was part of the April Fool's joke, I, I guess, from... Uh, I'm hoping. I'm not really sure why. So once again, for those of you who haven't seen yet, uh, Andrew is showing where my uh, roots are from. My mother uh, was born and lived there, and some of my family still lives. It's a, a small village, uh, some 50 kilometers uh, from Russian border. Um, my happy place yeah our happy place now it used to be my happy place now it has become our happy place so uh, uh, very peaceful and very safe we still have a bit of land in the area uh, i'm hoping one day one day god permitting we'll be able to uh maybe put something up there i love the country part of here and it's nice because they don't get many tourists and we go there's one local store and when I go there, I'm kind of a bit of a sideshow to the whole thing. <laughs> they, all the, the locals like to hear me try and order stuff at the, uh, like, what was the last one? It was a bottle. We were having a big supper, and I ordered a bottle of cranberry vodka. And that was fun because I had eight locals watching me order it, and they all thought it was quite funny. So, Yeah, mm -hmm. but uh, Jada Diva, it was a stork's nest there. That's right. Uh, oh, sorry. Huge, yeah. uh, almost like eagle's nests here in North America more. Yes. Yeah, uh, Definitely. Is this the, there we go. They do have a map to it. And this is the corner store. I love this place. I love anything. And Riga has gone quite modern, of course. But I like these areas because it's still close to the Russian border and they still have these stores that were during Soviet time. And this one is really fun because it translates directly to store, right, Xenia? Yeah. And you know, that was the thing about Soviet time. There was no brands. It wasn't the... Uh, Mr. Clean, or as it's called in Europe, of course, Mr. Proper, or anything. It was hand soap. It was dish soap. It was, there was no competing brands. It was uh, very generic, but I, I absolutely love this kind of stuff. I'm a real sucker for Soviet history because I'm 44, and that was my... Uh, I didn't have World War II. I didn't have Vietnam. My conflict was two things, was uh, Ireland and the Soviet Union. So it's always great to see things like this because they're really living history. And the people are fantastic there as well. They, they, they're so kind. And uh, I, One of your uncles tells me these stories all the time. And God love him. I love how much he let me into the family because he tells them all in Latvian and I have no idea what he's telling me. And sometimes they can go for a good 20 20 minutes, I'd say, <laughs> very detailed. Yeah. He finds ways. He'll draw lines in the sand or he'll – anything that he can uh, do to uh, – 
did to keep me in, uh, keep me with them. So the strangest thing about the the languages are that uh, sometimes you can communicate with each other even not knowing each other's languages. Definitely uh, using different other uh, objects uh, like uh, using a potato to ref uh, a cucumber. Oh, yeah. cucumber replicate the submarine uh, yes. because my uncle used to be in the Soviet Navy. And uh, so he was trying to tell Andrew about his stories uh, from the Soviet times. Um, so it's it, it's interesting communication for sure. Um, thank you very much for those who tweeted out, James Cox and uh, the other ones who tweeted uh, out our stream. Thank you, I appreciate very much. And for those of you who have just joined us, uh, Happy Trails Hiking just uh, joined us as well. Nelson Wise. Nelson. The Terrell Emerson TV, Fathers and Sons. Thank oh, you. great. Glad Thank to have you, nice you guys. To see you too. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Um, oh, okay. Eric the Red's uh, very nice to meet you. Thank you so much for coming, Eric the Red. And please, everybody, check out his channel as well. He's got some really great content onto it. And Eric, I believe I put you in already in the I'm a Creator playlist. Please uh, double check. And also, I put you in the one as well as everybody here. I haven't seen one that I've missed yet that's in the, our, our new playlist as well. Everybody connect. So, um, and we'd like to have you on soon, Eric. So, <laughs> don't be a stranger, okay, please? <laughs> so. Uh, so yeah, if anybody of you are thinking of going live, if you have or have not done that yet, uh, we are looking for people to uh, uh, go uh, on our future live yeah. streams. We're also looking for people who would like uh, uh, one of their videos be featured uh, and reviewed. Yeah. Uh, if you want to see an example of that, you can go and look on our previous live stream after this one. Yeah. <laughs> and we're not here, we're not doing one of these, let's tear them down and no. stuff like that. Everybody's got a voice. If you have questions about it, we'll gladly try to help any way we can. It's more we just want to meet the people behind it. Yeah. We're really looking for the backstories. Yeah, it's, it's exchange of information, exchange yeah. of experience and, and, and skills, and also a great possibility for you to feature and highlight your channel and get uh, some more supporters. So if you're interested, please uh, leave me a message on Twitter, or if you don't have a Twitter account, then find us on any other social media you have, yeah. or you can email us at bookpushstudios at gmail.com. Definitely. We'll have mm -hmm. all of that information down below after uh, the live goes on. Yep. Yeah. Sounds great. That's great. Love to hear from you guys. Uh, it's always great. So please, uh, the, the the bigger the connection, the happier we are. So, ADJ Travel is is saying that his wife uh, grandfather is from Lithuania. Oh wow, That's great! We took the kids there a couple of years ago. I, I had traveled all over Europe and never went to Lithuania. And the reason why is because it is so close to Latvia. We always kind of like took the chance to go further out. It, it's unbelievable there. We went on the peninsula. Um, that runs down into Kilingrad, and these sand dunes and this water into the Baltic Sea, and you can walk out, it's like a mile, and you're still at, like, chest level, warm water. The kids had a ball there. Um, they, um, there's a really neat thing, and actually it was in one, the last video I did, the one in Europe for Lithuania. I think I used that picture. No, I didn't. No, I went with the town. Sorry. I'm going to do another one put it up. Because there's these World War II German bunkers that are all strategically placed down the, the coastline of Lithuania. And it was amazing to see, like, of course, the 120 millimeter guns are all gone and everything, but the bases are still there. They're gigantic. And people are, like, laying on top of them, sunbathing and stuff like that. Uh, the beaches have beautiful sand. It was one of the nicer places we went to. Oh yes, definitely. Uh, it's it's yeah. it's beautiful and historic. Yeah, yeah, and no. It it has all the opposite adjectives you could ever find. Yep. Uh, it has all of that there. We did a road trip with the kids, and uh, we we actually left the beach after two days, and we went to uh, in the interior more just to find out. I went to a gas station, and somebody had tried to. I don't think they tried to clone my credit card, but it was just a gas station that was that had uh, been uh, problems in the past. So Visa had frozen my bank card, and we were just about to check into our hotel, so we had two kids and a Volkswagen Rabbit. So we definitely needed a place for the night. So we finally got that all sorted out, thanks to a very good rep with Visa. The first one was not so helpful, but the second one definitely came around for us. So 
people there are very welcoming and, yeah. uh, and uh, very friendly, even if they don't talk English, which older uh, generations yeah. might not as much. Younger ones, uh, most of them do. But <clears throat> people are very friendly. Um, and it's an attitude of remembering that you're the guest of their country and not like, oh, well, back in my in my my country, we can do this and that. If you if if that's the case, then I tell people, why not just visit your country more? You'll probably be a lot happier. It's to feel the the hospitality, to feel out of your comfort zone is a nice feeling. Bottle caps, we congratulate you with four hundred. You were saying that just uh, <laughs> a month ago you had eighty supporters when we discovered you. Excellent. <laughs> I don't know if we can take the credit, but yeah. <laughs> Congratulations! Now you are at yep. four hundred. Thanks to I'm Creator Community and yep. uh, thanks to all the great supporters. That's amazing. Uh, that's great. Uh, yeah, Life with Ken and Jane uh, got the four hundred one. So. Congratulations, guys! It's nice to see you guys growing. You all have great stories, and I want more people to hear your and see your stories. So that's the biggest part of the numbers, in my opinion. Yes, yes we need them for YouTube. We all know that we can't live under a rock. But the biggest thing is is to hear other people and what they're seeing and you know, what they're seeing through their eyes. And you got a lot of great stories to tell. So really happy for all of you. Drone review man, you guys rock. Oh, we all you. rock, that's for sure. We <laughs> yes. all do. That's yep. amazing. You do as well, for sure. That's some I think uh, is uh, drone uh I want to check out I want to double check your channel right now, actually. What are you are here? Because there's, yes, okay, I know I just had to see the icon up close. I just want to make sure. So glad to have you here. Some great footage, too. Got some fast-flying footage. That's actually some of the stuff. Yeah. And some very cinematic mixing together. Very cool. Yeah, I love drone footage. Yeah. Uh, we're jealous because in Canada, it's so hard to get good drone footage. So we're always jealous. Yeah, well, our laws here are quite restricting for that, but... Uh, <laughs> And we enjoy it through your guys' yeah. more. We're hoping that eventually they might relax them a bit. I don't know if you're aware of it, but in Canada right now, you're not allowed to shoot within nine kilometers of any. It would make sense if it was any air airport. Uh, it, you're not allowed to shoot with uh, within nine kilometers of any uh, spot that you could fly off, like hospital roofs or fields that could... Uh, uh, be used as um, airports or, or landing sites and things like that, obviously, as well as, I don't know if they did that, that rule about the living creatures and not identifying. Yeah, well, it. the thing is, everything is a temporary law right now until it passes through Parliament, so that gave them all kinds of freedom to come up with as many bizarre things as possible, and they are able to enforce them in the interim. So it was a really shady area, kind of, to be honest. With lots of, well, like I say, absolutely bizarre, bizarre standings. And yes, bottle caps, you do shoot. I know you're in Canada, you do shoot. There is possibilities with it. It's just the feasibility of being able to use it more in proper settings. Like my parents live in a very rural area, literally on their side of the this river that divides the two towns. There's like 300 people. But there is a dusty road landing strip for Cessnas is maybe used five times a year and because that's there you're not allowed to fly within nine kilometers of it and if you're registered as a business that's the real tricky part yes you could say it was still personal but the maximum fine is five thousand for personal and twenty five thousand for commercial so it's not a message you really want to get into so yeah you got to really be careful have a great night I hit like going to watch. For those of you who are leaving us now, if you have to go, well, yes. thank you for coming. Yes, if definitely. you don't, please stay. <laughs> yes, we love having you guys here. <laughs> um, oh, I just was reading Drone Review. I seen your, I just seen it now. He says, because I was talking about the law, he goes, LOL, my favorite uh, FPV channel is uh, Homegrown Canadian FPV. Yeah, no, there are guys that are doing it here. Thank God they are, because they're the ones fighting for our rights, so. Uh, Joey would like to do a vacation out of the collab in Canada. So with us and <laughs> Ken and Jane uh, are saying that they're coming to Canada this summer. So maybe we can uh, work something out. That would be Definitely. awesome. The more we can do these uh, like real life collabs, the better. It's, it's yeah. an amazing idea. Why not? <laughs> Is ATGH Travels, are you leaving? Or were you saying goodbye to uh, Drone Review Man? Uh, 
Yeah, they have to go. Yeah. 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 That's okay. Thank you. Yes. Uh, don't forget to come back and leave the comment after the live video goes on uh, uh, as a regular video. Yeah. Come back, like it, and comment. Say that you have been on the live, uh, so other channels uh, creators uh, can see you and and maybe checking you out as well. So Definitely for come sure. Come back afterwards. So, uh, so do we have any word from? Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, from uh, uh, Marty. Uh, yeah, we're actually uh, just waiting for her to come on. Uh, okay. Uh, so maybe you can uh, talk a little bit about the video experience. Sure. So while we're trying to set yep. up our guest. Sounds like a plan. Uh, let's see. So, hey, Joe, you got one. Uh, one million views. Down the road, I'm trying. I'm trying. It's being a jerk. All, oh, yeah. You got the link, uh, Marty, and you just have to click onto it, and it should let you go through the rest of the. Yeah, way. I'm on Twitter, so I'll. Oh, okay, I'll, perfect. I'll try to sort that okay. Out oh, bottle cap. So the Maverick Pro now they do have that into it, that you can't turn on the drone if it's in one of the zones. Because that was a big issue, and they were really after uh, DJI to do something. At the time, DJI was kind of uh, pulling their uh, pulling their weight a little bit, and I and I don't blame them. They were very cautious about signing up for that. But uh, it's good if they are, because that means then exactly oh, they'll ease off on the uh, on the fines a bit. The weird part was last year. I was just reading there as they handed out, I believe, it was eighteen fines in Canada. And of course, it's a federal law, but every one of them was enforced here in Quebec. But I mean, yes, it's federal law, but it was Quebec agents, of course, that were handing it with the Quebec officials. So no controversy. But yeah, they can get pricey quite quick. So, but that's good. I mean, I want to see. It's an awful shame that we don't have a huge drone community here, because uh, we definitely have the landscape for it. So uh, stuff like that is a great step in the right direction. I just hope the government will ease the laws some. I understand certain areas, and they don't want to let it get out of control. And, of course, too, there's always somebody that ruins it for everyone. And they just had another example again there not long ago of flying around the airport here in Montreal. Uh, it's not that it will – I just still don't believe it will cause much damage if they can hit a bird that weighs 10 times more than the drone. The point is it's just giving fuel to the fire – and a lot of people then jumping on the bandwagon saying they should be banned completely. Uh, I'm a drone. I just throw my camera in the air. <laughs> Ken and Jane. <laughs> and Ken and Jane says that they don't own a drone. Just throw a camera in the air. Yeah. yeah. It makes for amazing footage. <laughs> Yeah, uh, it's possible. I, I definitely please send clips. Please upload. I would love to see some of them. It would only be about ten seconds, but it would be one heck of a ten seconds. That's for sure. Oh, that's a good one. Um, uh, maybe I can show you guys very quickly. Just uh, let's see here. Just bear with me for one second. I want to open up something else here. Um. I would love to be able to open up Adobe Premiere in here, but the problem is, is uh, I guess it's a buffering. It won't show the screen inside. It, it's uh, We tried that the other night, and it just didn't work out. I'm going to be trying uh, OBS. I, I'm hoping maybe tonight. I'll do that late through the night, try and start playing with it to see if um, I can get it to work because it would be great to look at the projects in mid. Uh, I might if, if that was the case. I might even uh, do a bit of editing, like editing live on certain parts, just to try it. Let's see here. Sc screen share. Here's just a little taste of the video. This is in one of the drafts. As you can see, it's part of the series. You have exclusive look yeah. before it has been posted. So. And this is the highest point in Europe that I was telling you about. And I want to do one of these videos every week and start showcasing more of our photography. Well, the color correction hasn't been completed yet, but just to give you a little sample of it. Of course, we'll always be using the same music, like the last video. That's the train where you meet at the summit, and that's uh, that takes you to the summit, excuse me. And you're literally up and around here. 
And this is the train station inside the mountain. But like I said, color correction hasn't been fully done yet or anything, so. And that's looking from the top. That's the highest point in Europe. It's, uh, and you go by train. And then the weird part is it's actually been there for over 100 years to go by train to that summit. Cogwheel train, of course. It's, uh, I have a bit of video from that time, but it's, uh, yeah, it's, it wasn't when I was taking good video, let's just say. <laughs> so that'll probably be going up. Uh, I got to find a time, a time this week that I like, because once it goes up, I want to have a schedule that every week will do that. So, uh, xenia has got so many pictures that I just want to get up and more people to see them, and that's a great way to showcase it. <clears throat> Trying to keep a theme, of course, each week, but I want to keep the same music, the same intro, just change the titles. Something that doesn't take uh, two weeks of work and still has great viewing quality. So that's another thing, too, guys. Uh, I that I've been really bad at, but I'm trying to get better now. Is YouTube loves schedules? They love when you upload. Uh, every Wednesday at 8 a.m. or whatever time you pick, it really uh, starts to favor your videos for that because they definitely want to push more series-type stuff. And something else I don't know if you're aware of is to try and avoid putting up uh, two videos within 24 hours because that really, really squashes uh, the, 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 the previous video. It completely, like, almost kills it in the water. Because it will give all the advertise the, the the push to the new one, and the other one's just left to die. So, um, unless it's something you really don't care about, yeah, spread out your videos. Uh, a great example, I think I brought it up one day on uh, "I'm a Creator," was um, about uh, how to how uh, Linus Tech Tips handles that, which is one of the biggest tech companies, uh, tech uh, review channels on YouTube. They're out of uh, Vancouver, BC, and they do videos they always wait a 24-hour cycle for each one except for fridays and it's kind of ingenious it was a smart idea because they have full advertising paid but those spots on friday afternoon those videos are completely paid by a sponsor whether it's visa or of course your cases whatnot and the reason why they put them friday afternoon is because they do a live stream on twitch friday night which then they bring over onto youtube so they don't mind if that other one gets quashed a little bit because it's already been paid for by the advertiser. So it's, it was a really smart way of handling that issue. And one of the few times you can put up two videos in 24 hours and still prosper for it. Oh, uh, have uh, half blood pixie hot. It's Tuesday for me, but happy Monday to you. <laughs> Thank you so much and happy Tuesday to you. And glad you could join us. Another Come great on, channel. Oh. <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay. Oh, okay. So we uh, we figured out our technicalities. <laughs> so maybe we can roll the uh, yep. video. Yeah, just going to make sure I got everything good here. Hide from Vodka. Uh, present to everyone. Okay. Well, we have our guest in the house. <laughs> Welcome. Hey. Thanks for having me. Oh, so glad to have you. I just wanted to run your intro for a sec. I'm just going to show everybody. I'm sure everybody's familiar with you already, if that's okay with you. For sure, yeah. And we'll just be two seconds. Like I said, nothing to be nervous about because look at us and we're at the controls and I'm still wishing. I feel like I got into my father's camera stuff and he's going to come back and take it away from me. <laughs> so, okay, here we go, guys. So amazing. I love that intro. There we go. Welcome. So that's our guest, uh, um, fellow Canadian. Yes. Go and check her out. Amazing travel videos, um, amazing information. Welcome. Thanks for having me. Great to have you. So, yeah, it was a little tricky to get on at first. Yeah, for some reason it said I'd block the plug-in, but it never gave me a button to trust it. But Yeah, <laughs> that's, yeah that's, that's sketches and te technical. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's quite so common it's with this. this. It's nice that it's free. It's nice that it's available, but, yeah, there's always that catch for it being free and available. So 
Welcome it's always to that last to have you. that last five minutes that it always gives you a small heart attack too. <laughs> <laughs> well, you made it happen, so good for you. Are you still nervous? A little bit, but I'll I'll get into it. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's good. And please uh, support our guests. And if you have any questions, uh, drop it in a chat box. Uh, so then we can ask. Um, uh, Half Mud Pixie wrote, oh, this is awesome. I love how you guys do these. And right underneath, well, I am totally subscribing after that intro. So there Aww. you go. Thank you. And I love it, by the way, too. I really love the. Who Did you make it yourself? Well, no, the background, the, yep. like the blended black. It was a free one from. Okay. And then I used the copyright free music, and then I added the words after. No, but it blends in seamlessly. Really love it. Great job. And it really uh, it suits your channel. That's why I was wondering. It a lot of them, a lot of people have trouble with that at the beginning, but you really nailed what you're about with your intro. So that's quite impressive. I didn't have one for the longest time, but I'm glad I got one now. Well, you definitely made, you got one now. <laughs> that's a, it's a keeper. <laughs> so <laughs> great job. Father and son has hello to the guests. Son. Yes, and Musky. Uh, Musky Hans, I never want to mispronounce your name, so sorry. I always double Jake onto it, <laughs> <laughs> and I know I'm gonna, this one of those names you know you're going to mess up because you're thinking about it too much. So, well, we know how amazing your channel is, and we are so passionate about travel that we we oh. watched a lot of your videos. Yeah. For those <laughs> who haven't seen your channel yet, how would you present uh, what it is about? Uh, can you tell a little bit about your channel? Um, well, I write a blog predominantly and I've been writing my blog since 2010 and I, I was embedding videos into the blog at first and they were horrible quality so I think it was five years ago I started using YouTube to just have like travel videos to supplement my blog posts and then I've kind of gotten more and more into the YouTube channel and now it's evolved into a travel channel and not just random stuff I was shoving on for my blog <laughs> and since I've had kids it's evolved from you know young single solo travel to couples travel now it's a family travel blog i'd classify it as that's very cool though it's nice that you have that evolution in your work like that and you've had it from different perspectives that's really nice mm -hmm. things are always changing yep go ahead i was just saying things are always changing so you can't really yeah. label your blog i guess and especially once with kids things change by the moment so <laughs> but it's good you involve them i like that about your aspect about your channel <clears throat> Excuse me. I have a lot. We have a lot of friends, and I've heard that a lot. You know, oh, well, I miss when I used to do that, and now with the kids we can't. The kids don't want to travel, and I've we've never bought into that. It was mm -hmm. about getting the kids used to traveling early, and they're actually great travelers, in my opinion. Do you feel the same way? Oh, definitely. We took our daughter to Costa Rica when she was only ten months old. Um, she loved it, and I think I'm probably giving my kids a bigger case of wanderlust than me because they come home, they come home from day home, and they're like, "Are we going to the airport?" Like, yeah, well, not today. <laughs> that's what you want to hear. <laughs> that's that's a great parent right there. That's not going to be saying expensive, that. kids. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, too, that's something we had thrown at us too. Some people would say stuff like that because when we traveled in OA, must be nice type of attitude. But I said we gave up also things that other people might consider very important to do. That. Yeah. Uh, it's all about what you want to do in life. You have to make it a priority. Yep. That's right. And I don't knock somebody if they want a new car every second year or they want to do, you know, everybody, but you, we can't have everything. And we've just come to grips with that. So we just pick and choose what's important to us. Yeah. I mean, some years the necessities come first and some yes. years you can go on three trips in a year. It just exactly. I wish we were still sometimes had a base in Europe because it was so cheap to travel once oh, you're yeah. over there. So getting there, that's expensive. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Uh, so a little bit about your travels. Uh, where have you been? What's your favorite spot? <laughs> um, my favorite spot is Iceland, hands down. I oh, love uh, we love you. <laughs> <laughs> I <just> say, <laughs> club. <laughs> Ours as well. Yeah, it's such a beautiful, it's almost like an alien planet. It's so gorgeous. It's not part of the <laughs> earth. I agree with you. I tell everybody that. <laughs> There's nothing comparable. No. I don't know if you knew we were married there. No, I didn't. Yeah, we had a Viking wedding there in 2000, on Canada Day 2014. We eloped. That's why we loved your story about eloping to Costa Rica. By the way, congratulations yes. on your wedding anniversary. <laughs> Thank you. We did we nothing to celebrate it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's also good. <laughs> 
reviewing, playing, and more RPM. Welcome. So glad to have you here. Animation drawing. We have a great guest tonight. We have Marty from. I, uh, how did you get your name for your channel? I want to ask you about that. Why down the rabbit hole? Because I'm assuming that started back when you were blogging. Yeah, yeah. Back in 2010, I was looking for a blog name, and Alice in Wonderland's one of my favorite stories because she goes uh, on this fabulous adventure, falling down the rabbit hole. So that's kind of what I felt like I wanted to go do, and I put a W for copyright. <laughs> oh, that's what. Okay, so here we go. That that's, was the next question. That so. was the next question. <laughs> <laughs> you, you see where I was leading you towards. <laughs> Everyone asks why rabbit with a W. Well, uh, I didn't it, want to uh, be stealing. It's a good conversation yes. starter too, <laughs> for sure. It's, it's, different. it's my internet handle too. Whenever I sign into anything, it's rabbit with a W. So. Well, that's very smart. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> the, the foresight you call. Uh, so uh, you live in Alberta, is that right? Yes. Yeah, so Southern Alberta, or you were you were raised in Southern Alberta? Or? Um, it's kind of always been Central Alberta, around like the Edmonton Red Deer area. But I went okay. to school down in Southern Alberta. Oh, okay. I, I love Edmonton, by the way. I I used to my our daughter. Well, we lived in Saskatchewan, um, and our daughter was born in Saskatchewan. I were I lived in um, uh, we lived excuse me in uh, Weyburn, Saskatchewan. I hauled in the oil fields. I went to college with a girl from Weyburn. Oh, did you? See, I love that area. I love because there's always a connection. I love <laughs> I love the West. I really have. Uh, it we know it. A special place to me. Uh, I would love to go back soon again too. We we had a good time out there. Yeah, so definitely love mm. to uh, visit the Rockies again. That was uh, amazing. Trip. It's hard when you're in the oil field because you work so hard. You work so many days. You know, it was hard to have that enjoyable time, so it'd be nice yeah. to go back with a bit more of an open slate. Go to so. explore instead of just being exhausted all the time. Yes, yes, exactly. exactly. But we still travel lots. I don't know how we... I look at pictures of when we went... I had been out there already because I also worked for a big music company for years, so I used to travel a lot of the... I used to do music signings at uh, Mother's Music in Edmonton. Okay. Yeah, I used to be there in Long McQuaid and stuff. I worked for a company that once it, the products came to Canada, we were a distributor for like Marshall amplifiers and that. Okay. So I would follow these musicians. I would go wherever the corporate side, and I would do signings there with them when they would be playing in town. We, I, I loved Edmonton. There was some a fun, fun job. <laughs> it's a great place. Actually, Latvia reminds me a bit of uh, Edmonton because for their temperature, it's around the same height, so they get same. the shorter days in the winter and stuff like that as well. Same winters. Yeah. It's been a long winter out here. <laughs> yeah, I know. With the winter in Canada, well, and even northern United States has been crazy this year. Nothing's following the pattern. <laughs> no, no. In winter, uh, do you uh, prefer to go somewhere uh, warm as your vacation? Or what is your preference in the winter time? I would like to go somewhere warm, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Haven't had the chance, but I um, before I had kids, I would go spring break <laughs> myself. My husband's an accountant, so he can never go. Oh. For spring break because it's tax season, mm -hmm. right? So I would just solo travel for spring break, but since I've had kids, spring break has been non existent yeah. for me, and it is expensive. Like, you know, when you start bringing two, three more with you, yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely. A spring break is one of the most expensive seasons for traveling every, everywhere, I guess. Uh, do you, um, where do you have any plans for places coming up? Yeah, in May, we're going on a road trip with the kids to Vancouver Island. Oh, wow. Just the southern tip of the island, do Victoria and Port Renfrew and Nanus Bay. And the kids haven't seen tide pools before, so we're going to do some tide pooling. Oh, that's neat. And then um, my big one is October. We're going to London and Venice and Vienna. For Excellent. Two oh, that's amazing. Excellent. Yeah. And all the kids? <laughs> no kids for that one. <laughs> no kids? Oh, even, oh, well, congratulations <laughs> to you guys. Oh, well deserved great. break then. <laughs> yeah. Uh, why those uh, three places? How did you choose those in Europe? Um, my husband's company is doing a conference in Vienna. So that's mm -hmm. five days. So we have to go there anyways. Oh, we have to go there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. Well, yeah. so oh. Can we all have some support group for Marjorie? <laughs> I'm so upset. <laughs> and then um, we have a friend that lives just outside of London that we haven't seen in a few years. So we thought, well, we'll do a stop over there and visit them. They just had a baby so we can see their oh, baby. And then we were like, we've got four more days we could squeeze something out of, and I've always wanted to do Venice. So we thought, we'll check a bucket list item off my list. Well, when you're there, that's the nice thing about getting around Europe. I mean, you can go for pennies on the dollar a lot of places. Yeah, so. yeah we took like a, it's a $40 tr 
40 euro train ride so yeah oh the trains are fantastic you know, it's it's part of the experience in my opinion the train so and you're gonna really enjoy it so, yeah, yeah for those of you who are planning to to travel uh across the pond so to say uh it's it's definitely uh, worth looking into because uh traveling in between the countries is so cheap uh all the um cheaper air airlines and train as andrew was saying is a great and cheap way to travel there yes. i would even say it's the cheaper way of traveling than going from one coast to another in canada for example or oh. in states yeah. from one state to another <laughs> you get to see many countries try different types of food and experience different culture and all for uh, for a dime really comparing mm -hmm. to what we can uh, do here in uh, we're getting America. more canadians in again in for the girl is here uh, uh, cheers from Kelowna. so you see you're making a uh, bottle caps is from uh, bc as well yeah, i know bottle caps so yeah no no definitely <laughs> you got lots of friends all around so awesome. there's so many of us it is and it's nice i mean i don't want to exclude anybody but it is nice to have some of the canadians come together like that it's, i'm really that was something we said right from the get-go we were going to try to do so it's really extra special to have you with us so yes mm. exactly uh so uh a little bit uh, more back to your channel so for those who haven't uh, uh checked it out yet uh how do you uh do your videos what is your process of creating a video from start to finish what do you get your inspiration what do you do with it when do you decide to post it tell about the process a little bit if you can okay sure um well my channel my youtube channel is based off my blog and my blog is a bucket list blog so i've got 167 things on my bucket wow. list that i want to do Lovely. and so each of my posts is specific to a bucket list item and then there's extras but i try and try and keep it to the bucket list and then so each video should go with the post and then when uh i made a new year's resolution that i was going to start posting on youtube twice a week so Ooh. i do my simply video sundays and that's just kind of whatever me and the kids are getting up to. And then my Wednesdays are blog post blogs and mm -hmm. video. Um, mm -hmm. And so my inspiration is just whatever we're up to. And Sundays is more casual. And the Wednesdays one is more focused towards my bucket list travels. How are your kids uh, taking the YouTube stuff and being recorded and all that? They love it. My daughter will snatch the camera from me and start narrating. So she'll oh. when she's 13. <laughs> You're really getting them all. The, that's good, though. You, they're filmers. You get to do more uh, in front of the camera. You can get them as camera yeah. people. And they're fearless. That's yeah. the nice thing about that age. Eh? It mm -hmm. becomes a family yeah. venture. <laughs> yes, I agree so much. My husband, on the other hand, hates being filmed. He hates it. <laughs> You'll see his yeah. cameos sometimes. He'll walk into the frame and then he'll just walk right out again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh, this has been the hardest thing I've ever done in my life is being in front of the camera. Yeah. I still find that the hardest thing I've ever done. Both of us are more yeah. used to being behind it, Andrew, doing videos and me doing photography. We're not really quite used to this part of the lens. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> but even me more, like she, we went on vacations, even our wedding, she's like, let's take a selfie. And I'm like, oh. Can we put a mannequin <laughs> in my place or anything? <laughs> <laughs> I think that a lot of that to changing with uh, with the social media as well. Uh, you know, this, especially the selfie culture. Uh, yes, it's, it's getting people more unshy. Uh, of, of their own look in the picture and I mean also for myself what I found getting easier with this is I've already kind of know you a little bit That's what I liked about mm -hmm. how the community built, you know, we almost have like a foot in the door already that, And that's not yeah. so like a cold call. So that yeah, I so enjoy. It's more like a chat not an yes. interview So very much so and that's nice like that. It takes a bit of the edge off for, for everybody. So um, yeah, It's kind of in the culture too. We have like um FaceTime and you're talking to family members in a medium like this. So yes. trying to get used to that, but that's a very good point too. I never even thought of looking at it that way. It combines into that as well. It's just like an extension of it. So mm -hmm. that's very cool. As long as you don't think that it's getting recorded and it's gonna be <laughs> later. <laughs> Yeah, that's I tried really to keep out of my head, and now I, I I can barely even watch our own live streams. I I turn. <laughs> I'm still dealing with it. And <laughs> it's so hard, especially for kids. I sometimes think about children uh, because we have covered like all three uh, like uh, yeah. age gaps: uh, our seven year old, and eleven year old, and then twenty year old. So <laughs> <laughs> different yeah. parts of it. And I and I oftentimes think about uh, how it is for them now growing up because yeah. obviously everything 
thing gets recorded even when you don't know it and you don't yeah. want it, it still can be recorded and posted and what can are possible consequences about it and like how it's gonna influence their future. I think it's a major part now and we didn't have that growing no. up. Uh, even my 20 year old, like he, you think of it, he grew up with a mouse culture where my daughter, she's all touch screen. Mm -hmm. You know, it's amazing how things change so fast now like that. Even between the three ages, there's such a big change in what they learned onto, what they were based on. Different and things. it becomes normal for them instantly. Yeah. Oh my God! Yes, yesterday we had a, a guest, uh, a, a little baby, our friend, and, yeah. and our daughter. She was uh, teaching the baby girl how to press buttons on the tablet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how to swipe on the screen you know and i would have never even thought of yeah. doing it but for her it was like well we're playing you know yeah uh, so it, it's, it's second nature now definitely <laughs> oh. uh getting back to your bucket list uh, from the things that you have done already uh what was the hardest and what was the easiest oh i think on my bucket list um <laughs> That's a good question, and I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the hot seat question. The easiest would be uh, I always wanted to like just go to an all-inclusive resort and see what the big deal was because I kind of always poo-pooed them like, oh, that's pretty lame. You just sit around and everyone waits on you hand and foot, and what are you, what are you experiencing? But I went for one week, and I'm like, I'm just going to do this, and it was a lot of fun, actually, and I really enjoyed it. Of course, I got out of the resort a lot because I, I can't sit still, but right. all-inclusive all nature. But I don't know about the hardest. Um, we feel the same way as you do, but that's why I, I like your answer to that because we're kind of the same way as well. We're always – I, I want to come back from a trip exhausted. I want to be so mm -hmm. burnt when I come back. I don't – I'm not craving relaxing. That's for my bed when I'm home. I paid to get out of here to see something different. I want to make it – maximize every moment possible. And yeah, I, I, can't I haven't uh, tried it, so I can't completely say I, I don't like it because I don't know. But I, uh, the same as Andrew just saying, uh, I can't imagine doing nothing for the whole week. But maybe I would enjoy it. I don't know. <laughs> but there is lots to do. Like, And I like the way you approached it. Like the way you looked at it was a great yeah. way of doing it. Yeah, like do, do nothing for the morning and enjoy the all-inclusive nature. And then do an afternoon excursion so you can get out of the resort. Where did you go for that? That was Cancun, and I was by myself, so okay. I didn't want to be just sitting at the resort all alone. Right. So I every afternoon I did like a dolphin swim. I went out to Chichen Itza. I did a catamaran cruise just just to get out of the resort and have some fun. The last one I only did one in my life. Well, it wasn't really sitting back. It was Can uh, Puerto Vallarta '93, for but it was with John Abbott College. <laughs> A lot like of changes since then, probably. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it wasn't relaxing. It was spring break. Oh yeah, <laughs> no sleep. <laughs> I would never put that in a relaxing category, but it was all inclusive. I think my go-to spot personally would be that where I would want to try uh, all uh, inclusive resort would be Cuba because I, I really want to see the country itself, like all the culture part it and the cars and, and everything about it is just fascinating. Uh, but at the same time, I think it would be a great uh, place to combine the two is exploring uh, the yeah. places around and then and, and have, as you're saying, the morning part all inclusive and worry free and, and then being able to get out and, and see yeah. uh, the places around. So that's on my bucket list. <laughs> <laughs> I actually haven't been down south uh, no. yet uh, when I... Yeah, I mm. when I moved to Canada, when I first came here, that was my first uh, flight overseas. Uh, so uh, we yet yet to explore. Yeah, so, uh, we have explored some of the states in uh, um, America, in, yeah. in the United States. I still Northeast, would want to. Yeah. yeah, I still and North wanna, Dakota would want to go down south. Would love to go down south. Oh. I kind of feel that all the food <laughs> culture there would. Uh, we just uh, read up my alley and all the color and everything there, and then eventually go go even down, down more down south. Yep, that would be great for sure. Central America. Yep. Yes. Would love love to. to. Yeah, yeah, that would definitely. That's another excursion side we love to start doing is down through there as well. So that's hopefully that's our bucket list. There we go. So. <laughs> yes. Tropical. <laughs> So going back to yes. the question about the hardest uh, one. <laughs> yeah, I was giving you a little time for that one because she's she she's a she's a pusher. She's <laughs> okay. Well, this wasn't. It's kind of a bucket list one, but I wanted always wanted to see Paris, and so my only chance so far to see Paris was when I led twenty three junior high students 
and 12 of their parents on a school trip to London, Paris, Florence, and Rome. Wow. wow. And I was the group leader and I had to haul around all these kids through like the London Metro or the Paris Metro and that's um, crazy. So, <laughs> so much for the we lost two the parents. We never lost any kids, but we lost two parents. Oh my. <laughs> they were trying to escape. <laughs> one got on the wrong metro, um, and the other one just left at the Eiffel Tower. She couldn't find us, so she just left and she didn't tell anybody. So oh my we spent God. hours searching for her. Oh no. Wow. That's... <laughs> that was a trip. So, but did you enjoy it even with mm. all that hassle? Yeah, I did. I did. Um, the kids were so great. Like we went to the Louvre and they were amazing. Um, the tour leader gave us a, like a scavenger hunt to get us around the Louvre and the kids had a blast and it was a really good trip. I would like to go back to Paris without 23 junior high students, but it was good. <laughs> that's, that's, uh, well, my hat's off to you because I always wondered how you guys were able to do stuff like that. I would be a panic and a nervous wreck with that many kids and crawling them around like that. I was. There's some pretty funny pictures the kids took of me where I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> well, you yeah, definitely deserve another tour of Europe with Sans the Kids. Uh, you more than anybody <laughs> deserve it. So you have our complete underdying su uh, support to get that. So. <laughs> so in Europe, was Paris your favorite spot or did you find some other place that uh, was more? Um, for that particular trip, uh, Florence. In general. Okay. Well, Florence, I love. Florence is one of my favorite cities in the world. Um, Scotland, we went to once, and it was amazing. I love Scotland. All the ruins and all the castles. Oh, it's an amazing place. Yeah, Andrew went there uh, two years ago. I think he went on a trip uh, to uh, islands in Great Britain in general, and also included Scotland because um, uh, his uh, mother's uh, roots are actually from Scotland. So he okay. went exploring down the family tree, and uh, it was quite interesting historical uh, exploration, so to say. It was yeah. all the, even found the castle that uh, his ancestor, oh, ancestor cool. lived a couple hundred years ago. Uh, so that was quite cool, I find. What do you think? Yep. Yeah, do you remember? Uh, I, I loved it, and uh, the people were so fantastic. Uh, Edinburgh reminds me so much of Ottawa, <laughs> or Ottawa reminds me so much of Edinburgh, I find. I'd moved to Edinburgh. It was amazing. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, I agree. I agree in a heartbeat. Beautiful place. Oh, the people are so friendly. And There's I was just like I'm, bagpipes on every corner. Just the isn't sound that so bag. amazing? You can hear it echoing for like the last kilometer walking <laughs> up to them. I loved it. And usually that would drive me crazy after a while. But because you're there, you can just feel it like right in your your, your bones. Yeah. I just was showing some people your uh, your blog as well. And you're getting a lot of support. Everybody that hasn't signed up to you is saying that you just keep saying post about she's got more support now. They oh, really awesome. love what you have to say. So thank you. And you that's, just thought that put your nerves at ease a little. <laughs> uh, I I love I love the I love your handle the down the I with the W. I think that's so creative. <laughs> I like anything like that. I, <laughs> I think you are using uh, all of uh, our major that's social awesome. networks uh, as as a fellow creator and uh, I just and mother <laughs> I just wondered how are you dealing with uh, uh, social media and hassle around it and uh, being a parent and having work and all that how how do you find uh, what are your t tricks of of dealing with all of that at the same time um I try and keep my phone in my bedroom so that when I have my little timeouts from the kids I can check up on my Instagram and Twitter and whatever but then I, I don't want to drag it out with me so that I'm not ignoring my children and I'm just on my phone the whole time. That drives me bonkers. Yeah. So I try to keep my phone in my room and then, because my room's kind of like my office, that's where I am right now. Um, so I could just kind of keep my space separate from the kids and life. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have a, a schedule uh, that you do for your other social media as well? And if you do, uh, do you use any tools for that in particular that we could share with our other? supporters here i i don't actually i just pick up my phone and if i see the the dot or whatever that shows me i have a notification i'll respond to it okay i i uh why i'm asking this question because i i find sometimes it quite um quite a lot of trying to share different things on different places since uh, the algorithms and demands are on different places mm -hmm. are different and and it's uh, sometimes seems very 
feels very overwhelming and takes up so much time. So I'm trying to find the tools of uh, scheduling <coughs> and creating the calendar for uh, sharing the social media stuff, especially also because we do kind of a couple separate things. We're business as well because we do like, you know, weddings and events and birthdays and things like that. Uh, and then we have videos uh, and also we have the channel. So I find it sometimes so much to share about that it takes a huge amount of time from my day. So every time I encounter a parent who does the <laughs> same thing, I wonder how do they do that? <laughs> Um, well, I did use an app for a little while called Todoist. I don't know if okay. you've heard of that one. Yeah. It's a, the scheduling calendar one. Um, but mostly I'm kind of a nerd. I, I'll show you. This is kind of how I plan out my, my blog and my scheduling and stuff. So I keep okay. everything in a binder and I have a calendar that this is when I post and I don't know. I'm, I'm old school. I like writing everything down on paper and calendars and yeah, I have a calendar too where I write it down. I don't trust my phone. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I'm not very consistent with like Instagram or Twitter. I try and get on there maybe once a day, but I focus mainly on uh, Facebook a lot because it's kind of tied in with the rest of my life. And then YouTube, I try and I try to respond to every single comment that people give me and. If somebody watches a video, I'll try and go back to their channel and return the support. So I find that's where I end up using most of my time. Uh, yes, especially in the last two months. So once we started uh, this, I'm <laughs> joined that creator movement, so to say, and, and try to get some views. Uh, um, thank you. My son just brought coffee. <laughs> uh, yeah, I find it took a, takes a lot of time, but all, it, it's a, as much as you give is as much as you get kind of so you, mm -hmm. you have to be involved and it's a great at the same time because we as i was mentioning before discovered so many great channels that otherwise we wouldn't have but yes i agree it takes a lot of time uh, to answer all of the comments especially and and i want to answer all of them right so it's uh, it's it's sometimes it's hard for sure um you mentioned facebook um have you noticed a decline or any kind of changes since the uh, latest algorithm changes there yeah, I think my stuff isn't getting shared as much in news feeds because I'll have close friends that I know they watch my videos and they'll miss one because they haven't seen it show up in their news feed. So I don't know how to fix that. Yeah, I find it's hard too, especially because it's changing and it's good. Like I see you have all of these uh, social medias uh, uh, on, on your blog as well. Like it's good to, uh, not to have everything, every egg in one basket, <laughs> all eggs in one basket. But uh, sometimes I just wonder if it's just better to um, focus on what we love doing and maybe just leave the socials like on their own. But then I wonder, well, but then nobody's going to notice what we're doing anyway. So it's kind of struggle, especially nowadays when it's lots of these algorithm changes on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube. Then a lot of times I think about that uh, as well, like how much we should actually focus on that and how much. Almost should... like a case of pick your battles right like yes. I, I could want thousands of followers on instagram but that's not really where i want to focus so i don't spend a lot of time on instagram because i don't really care if i have a huge following there but i want to spend my time on youtube because i love doing my videos yeah i spend my time on my blog and i use facebook and twitter to advertise those so that's kind of where i call it a day yeah uh yes i think you're right uh picking kind of the t the target place is is a great way to go for sure uh, and then more focusing on that uh, um Camaro time is saying that answering all comments is so hard yes um, <laughs> uh, exactly for sure um, uh, we agree uh, any comments or questions uh, if you yes. have to our guest please submit uh, anything about the travel as well since uh, that's what we're mainly talking about today um, uh, what would you, uh, for uh, if we go back to the subject of traveling, what would be your top five tips for somebody who wants to start traveling more? Um, make it a priority. That's the number one tip, I'd say, so that you yeah. can save properly for it. Because I don't shop for clothes. <laughs> I, I, I think the last time I went shopping was maybe two years ago after I had my son. And I was like, mm -hmm. yeah, I can fit into smaller clothes again. And, so I went shopping then and I haven't gone since. Um, and yeah. I I do random things to save money. I'll collect bottles 
and save bottles. And I have an apple tree and I chop, I peel and chop apples and I sell them in bags and I right, save cool. all that money. And I, I try and do everything I can to save. So it's my priority. It's what I focus on other than my children, my family, but. Oh my God, you guys are like twins. <laughs> I swear to God. Yeah. I'm just, it's like you're telling her story and narrating it for her. <laughs> Bring, uh, how is it to pronounce frugal? Frugal, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's... but it's frugal for the things that I. That's what I believe. Like some people will say, "Oh, well, I got to spend thirty dollars on uh, a beef steak," bragging about it, and that's great. But to me, there's other things that I would rather do, so that's mm -hmm. not important to me. Like I'm, uh, I'm not so frugal. When we go to Venice, I'm totally spending eighty euros on a gondola ride. I don't yeah, care. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yes, spend yes. the money there. <laughs> But I won't buy myself like a new pair of jeans until the ones I have are like shredded. So. Yeah, yeah, the same thing. <laughs> That's right. They, you're right. Yeah. It's about priorities, and and if you want to do it, you yeah. gotta sacrifice something in order to get where you want to go. Well, my trip that I was uh, the new video that I'm putting up, I showed a while ago on Jungfrau, the train that goes to the top of Europe. Mm -hmm. Like I almost didn't go to that because I, I what happened was my uncle had passed away of cancer, and I grew up in a very small town. And he was only 62, and years ago, he backpacked in Europe and did the rails. And I always wanted to travel like him, but I had my first son when I was 23 and got into work, and I traveled some, but for business. And finally, Xenia kept saying, I had closed, I had a sign company, I closed that, you know, I was kind of at a crossroads. Then he passed away, and she said, why don't you go do it? Like, go live out that dream. And I'm like, oh, well, we got things to come and there's going to be, you know, the car's going to get fixed type of thing. And then about five o'clock in the morning, she woke me up and said, you're leaving in five days. And she had booked it for me. <laughs> and well, I got, life, I flew, is, life I, is short. It is. And it is. Gotta do. As parents, we forget that. We, I mean, we know it better than our children, but we're so focused on getting everybody else through stuff. We forget to do those moments like that. And I've always appreciated that she did that for me. It was the greatest gift I think anybody ever gave me. Yeah, that's awesome. Yep. Yeah, sometimes I felt like a financial broker, you know, <laughs> trying to check the, the latest flights, the cheapest ones, and then like being on all the sites at the same time and figuring yeah. out where is the best time to book and all those things. My yeah. God. Especially uh, as well, when we had uh, going back to Iceland subject, uh, uh, we not only got married there, we also had a business yeah. from and there, your events, Iceland, where uh, we actually uh, did a little bit of destination wedding for other people, a little bit of traveling uh, for other people as well. So that's why your channel so much, uh, uh, we kind of got gravitated, familiar, to it, yeah. gravi gravitated towards yeah. it because uh, we did a lot of that while while we were actively doing your events Iceland um, yeah. and more geared towards traveling uh, to Iceland but for sure and uh, yeah and it was always just trying to find the cheapest route and the yeah. cheapest way out it uh, definitely <laughs> was like a uh, broker <laughs> and yes as a side note I always said I would never wanted to get married again after my first marriage and somebody's very crafty and said, well, didn't you always want to go to Iceland? And I said, yes, since I was a kid. And somebody thought, wouldn't it be nice to mix the two? <laughs> oh, Iceland's a beautiful spot. Yeah. We got married in a hurricane. <laughs> it was a uh, it was 90 kilometer winds. <laughs> Were you in just Reykjavik? Uh, no, 40 kilometers out and it uh, translates to Whale Bay. Okay. Over when you come out the other side of the paid tunnel heading west. Okay. And, yeah, uh, We didn't get to that side. So oh, you, oh well, then you definitely. It's a whole went, different. We went scene. out to Hoff and we did the eastern half. Yep. Or actually, I'll just bring it up on here. It'll be easier. Um, yeah. What happened was, is we found this priestess online, and we wanted to find out how we could get in contact with her. And we found she'd married a couple. So after three months of tracking, I give Xenia credit for that. When she found the photographer, the photographer was in Chicago, but the couple were from Colorado, or vice versa. Something I don't remember. So then, exactly. from the photographer, we got to the the couple, and from the couple, we finally got in touch with Helena, and then that's where it all started from there. And Back then, when we were doing all that, uh, the, uh, travel to Iceland, like it was starting, but it wasn't as as popular, so it yeah. was very hard to find any like information beyond the flights, you know. Uh, so we so spent. I don't know, like three, four months just researching. Just how to, to find even, somebody to get you to even for your hair and makeup took yeah, months. Yeah, uh, how to do that, book uh, book that, how to even do the paperwork, the same as you were uh, talking about that in your video about your wedding <laughs> and, and figuring out are we going to be legally married or not and, and, and all that. It took 
forever. And and that's why we even started that business afterwards yeah. because we felt so bad for anybody who would ever want to do We've that. seen the demand into it like yes. right away. There was a demand. So it was smart. Yeah, well, yeah. but it was hard. It's hard because they're so busy that even with us facilitating, they're so busy. They're not running after any business. You know, if they lose it, there's 20 other ones coming right yeah. beside it. So it, it became harder and more stressful. Xenia was started. Xenia ended up, she had fibromyalgia. And at the time, we weren't sure what it was. So, you know, everything was just kind of starting to, uh, okay. it was time to make some changes. But definitely Iceland mm. was uh, a, a, a great inspiration for, uh, especially, I think, for my work. Yes. Because that's where I started for, uh, taking pictures more. Uh, and I mean, you have been to Iceland, you know that. Wherever you turn, you want to take a picture. <laughs> so, so that definitely fueled up our next chapter, so to say, that we're doing right now. I don't know if you can see right on the screen. I just put up. This is our yeah. wedding day. That's really cool. There's a TV show called Vikings on the History Channel. Mm -hmm. This is from Floke's wedding. We had Xenia's dress made by a wedding designer downtown. We brought in 30 screenshots from their wedding. Wow. And it took a uh, three weeks. She made it from start to scratch. Yeah, yeah. It, actually, I always saw that making a wedding dress, uh, like a custom wedding dress, mm -hmm. is very expensive and very hard and takes a long time. And it ended up being complete myth because it was the cheapest option and it took the least amount of time possible. And I loved it more than anything I tried uh, as a regular dresses in the store. So from now on, if anybody of my friends yeah. or anything are talking about getting their wedding dress, the first thing I say, like, go and see if you can actually uh, get a designer make it for you, because it actually ends up being cheaper and much nicer than you would ever be able to buy at the store. It's beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> well, in full disclosure, it cost eleven hundred dollars for the wedding dress. Yeah. And she That's built it for. She was a wedding designer who did wedding dresses and uh, medieval clothing. And we were the first one in 15 years to actually ask to even start to remotely cross the two of them. So we became her favorite subjects. So. <laughs> and so she really put her heart and soul into it. Yeah. So it was it was nice. Yeah. And I know we're waiting. Like, I, again, I was watching your video. You're talking about your uh, father in law and, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> and your wedding party. Like, we had just us. So we uh, didn't have our kids at the time with us. We just yeah. decided to elope. And uh, just uh, the photographer and his wife. And, the and, and a priestess, and that's all. It was mostly for us because that's all uh, you need. Yep. Yeah, that's all we need, and and it was amazing. I wouldn't have wanted it any other way. Hmm. No, it was it was a it made it magical. It really did. It was an amazing day. It's beautiful. Thank you so much. Yeah, it was, and that was. I realized that from the first wedding, where I seen my first wedding, we there was so much went in money and time wise into, and it's for everybody else. It's not for you. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we always said we wanted a marriage, not a wedding. So we don't want right. to blow all our money on the wedding. That's a great. Oh my! I wish we were still in the business of doing it. We'd be, <laughs> we'd be borrowing that one on creative license. I'll put a W <laughs> in front for copyright too. <laughs> That's amazing. I love that. Uh, when did you go to Iceland? It was 2014. I was four months pregnant, so I threw up a lot there. <laughs> what oh, what no. months were you there? Oh, uh, it was July. You were there when we were there when we got married. Yeah, we got married there on the 1st of July, 2014. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's, yeah, okay, we were there a little bit later, but that's <laughs> crazy. Because <laughs> we came back, we got married. We, we did the, I'm sure you're aware with it, the free stopover with Iceland Air. Mm -hmm. See, Xenia's mom had passed away the year before, and we had to go over to Latvia for that. So then all those things going on. So that was the next year we decided to get married. So we flew to Iceland, spent three days and got married, and then flew to Sweden, and then Sweden to Riga. Mm -hmm. And then on the way back, we flew through Norway and uh, Denmark, and then to Iceland, and we went back again for another. We stayed there for seven days and drove around the coast. Nice. So we did two times kind of thing on the way back. Yeah, we have been there uh, since uh, like a couple of times. Andrew has uh, gone to some of the trade shows there as yeah. well, and it's 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 really every time we go there, uh, it's just something new and something else that we fall in love with. This as as much as it's such a small place, but yeah. it always offers something uh, new. I find I like what you said. It's exactly like you're not on Earth anymore. No. It's, it doesn't belong to this planet. <laughs> Would you like to go back? Oh, definitely. Yeah, we only drove from Reykjavik to Hafen. So we just okay. did the bottom part of the ring road and then we drove back. We were going to go all the way around, but we 
took so long yeah. to go to the bottom parks. There's so much to see. Oh, well, yeah. yes, you want to stop everywhere. <laughs> I, I don't know how people I'd like do to it. go back and do the western half now. And yeah. the west is different. There's a lot more grassy hills and stuff like that, and it's got its own it's got its own feel to it. So it'll definitely be something new to, to see. So yeah, it's one it's one of those things that you can kind of uh, see all of it uh, like in one day, almost yeah. you know, like because you can see the waterfall and the glacier and Black Beach all in one day, and and the geyser. But at the same time, if you want to really really see it, you almost need like a week in every region because there's so mm -hmm. much in each. Each of those yes. places uh like we really enjoyed the northern uh part akiari uh which is the second largest uh, uh town in iceland uh and it's completely yeah. different than reykjavik uh it's, it's amazing out of the town wise it's my favorite place in all of iceland it's so amazing i love it it's reykjavik shrunk down to seventeen thousand people nice and it's northern more and it's it's uh it's yeah definitely if you do the west and it's about 400 kilometers from reykjavik so and if you enjoy skiing uh they offer skiing hill where you ski down almost right up to the water the arctic ocean uh, to yeah. the cool. arctic ocean yeah, yeah. it's it's, um, it's amazing there's where i would never pay for those packages but because of the trade show we got to pick one each time we went okay. that's where i took the last time and yeah you go down the second run and you basically touch the arctic ocean and six degrees in February. <laughs> yeah you don't want to fall in for sure <laughs> i know there's a volcano where they'll like they'll lower you down into the yeah. volcano and i want to do that a friend of mine did it on the show he took that one he said it was unbelievable yeah. also the scuba diving is amazing where they mm -hmm. take you down and you touch the both continents and ping valor yeah, yeah. Oh my God! I'm so impressed. You're better. <laughs> we went there, but it was it was in the middle of a rainstorm. So they <coughs> took us out of the bus. They said, "Here's the park," and then they put us back in the bus and drove away. So that's all we saw. Of it. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, Iceland, of course, is like visiting any coastal region. The weather yeah. can change in a heartbeat. Yeah, we had horrible weather. We we actually we didn't rent any hotels when we were there. We packed our backcountry camping gear, okay. and we went we went camping. Through the ring road but the weather was just horrible so we were we'd we'd camp for two nights and then we'd stay at a hostel one night just so we could be warm for a little bit and then we'd camp for another two nights and yeah and i was pregnant so that didn't help <laughs> yeah iceland with the weather like they say themselves you know you got to wait for five minutes and it's going to change you wait for another five minutes and it changes again it's yeah. so unpredictable uh and and yeah we did we did uh, a couple of times uh, the camping out like even when we went there back with kids uh for a week we, uh, we, we were we spent a week in iceland with a four and an eight year old in a honda civic and no hotels for seven days yeah, yeah. going right. all around uh, iceland <laughs> no hotels whatsoever but uh, yeah. the beauty of iceland uh, is uh, and why we did that way that uh, for those who don't know uh can you can go on top of the volcano at four o'clock in the morning or yeah. or go in a hot pool in the middle of nowhere land you know at midnight and watch the uh icelandic courses just running by you as the uh, midnight sun is setting down uh you yeah. know the, the the freedom of doing that at any time of the day uh without paying for it yeah. uh, it's it's amazing i never felt so uh peaceful uninhibited and anywhere free else yeah yeah definitely yeah. 3 p.m and 3 a.m they all blend they're all the same thing yeah and that midnight sun you know that golden golden color that every photographer yeah craves their whole life you have it for hours at a time you know it, it's a magical place i don't use yeah. that very often but it, it the kids had a great time too like they were i mean there was a great example too saying about kids traveling the kids slept better than we did they would just curl up in the car sometimes we just get out and like you know uh sit in one of these hot pools one night my dog youngest audrey it was four she fell asleep in one of these hot tubs in the middle of a farmer's field like in the middle of nowhere and they said <laughs> held her for like two hours while she was passed out in 30 degree water yeah yeah, yeah it's it, it's amazing definitely um what would be uh the country that would you like you mentioned paris is your favorite place or go to bucket list what would be the place like you would want to go if you would have a million dollars my ultimate Yes. Yes. I am dying to go to Peru. I want to go to Peru so bad. I want to hike the Inca Trail. I want uh, to see Machu Picchu oh. at sunrise. I know it's like stereotypical. No, no, but, no, but no, it's no. amazing. I desperately want to go to Peru. Yeah. 
David, uh, Peru, I mean, I met two people that I actually know that have went, and I mean, both of them, it's just been nothing but rave reviews. As mm -hmm. I, I get where it's coming from, I, and it's not just a stereotypical answer. It's really got some amazing beauty there. I mean, and not just Machu Picchu, but uh, like Colca Canyon, and like there's the Rainbow Mountains. I don't know what they're called, but there's just so many things to go see. Yeah, there is so much more to North American history, actually, yes. than uh, than just starting from exploration at, uh, of it when uh, Europeans true. came uh, here. Uh, there's so much more of actual history before that. And, and I think oftentimes people forget about it. Um, so it, it's yes. great that you mentioned that because that is also, uh, you know, uh, a, a big part of it. That's great. Uh, do you have a timeline? Like, do you have your that was idea my question. I was when, when, when would, do you think you would be able to go? Uh, I want to go before I hit, I don't want to give away my age because I'm oh. 49 forever, but uh, I want to go before I hit 40. That's my goal. If, if I'm not there before 40, I'm going for my 40th birthday. And that's, that's that. Well, no, that's the that's way to amazing. do it. Yes. <laughs> it's on your bucket list. Make it happen. <laughs> and I'm, I actually kind of want to go alone. I don't. My husband doesn't really want to do Peru, so I don't want to take him if he's not super excited about it. So yeah, he's I, not bringing I, think I want to do it solo. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> but that's great. You have a timeline. I yeah. think it's it helps, uh, and you probably know that with doing your bucket list. Uh, if if you have that timeline in your head, it's so much easier to 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 get actually to the goal of doing it, uh, because it gets more concrete in you know, uh, in uh, in the ways of trying to achieve it. I find. What's sorry? <laughs> Pardon me. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, did you always wanted to travel when you were growing up? Or? I did. Yeah. Um, my family, we didn't fly much anywhere, but we lots. We did lots of road trips out to BC and Vancouver Island, and we did tide pooling all through growing up. And then um, when I was sixteen, I had a a boy pen pal that lived in England. And we wrote for years. And then when I was 16, my parents were like, you should go visit him. And so they sent their 16-year-old daughter by herself to England to stay with a boy. Brave. <laughs> they, they trusted me. But um, we fought like cats and dogs when I was there. They had nothing to worry about. Um, and then uh, that same year, I went and lived in Quebec for three months. I did the French exchange. And I lived with another family and spoke in French. And I loved that. And then oh, nice. That same year again, my aunt and uncle moved to Texas, so I spent Christmas down in Texas. And then I didn't get to travel again until I was 27 years old. But I had a really good year when I was 16. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you started well. My God, yeah. your parents are really brave, that's for sure. Uh, where in Quebec uh, did you uh, go to? Saint Agathe de Mont. Oh, um, okay. Yeah. Uh, have you school. been to Montreal? I find that Montreal is a is a great example of uh, Europe vibe, so to say. It has mm -hmm. so much culture here of different um, mixes of everything. Uh, what do you think about that? Since oh, I love old Montreal. Europe. I loved old Montreal. Like they, they they have cobblestone streets. Like yes, <laughs> like being in Europe. Yeah. Yes, that's true. That's true. <clears throat> um, yeah. Well, uh, if anybody uh, still haven't after our amazing guest talk about our travels and our channel uh, if you still haven't uh, gone and subscribed please do so amazing videos and as you can hear <laughs> amazing guest tonight uh let's see, see what the chat is going on today about if we have any questions um oh uh, joey is getting the most positive vibe from everybody so good uh, be positive pre creating. Uh, that's great. Thank you. Uh, uh, lots of followers. Okay. Uh, Camara Time was watching your channel at the same time as watching our stream. <laughs> uh, lots of supporters uh, that haven't been supporting you before uh, went and supported you. So thank you. Uh, uh, yeah. Well, if you have anything uh, else that you the you want to add, and I we haven't asked you yet. Hmm. I don't know. What is your ultimate bucket list item? I love bucket lists. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. I had to run and get coffee. 
<laughs> okay, I have a cat meowing at my door. I hope it's not bothering me. Not oh, a no. bit. <laughs> not a problem at all. Uh, bucket list. I um, I want to finish off uh, Europe. I'm close. I'm missing Port Portugal and Italy. So of you course. You've been to Italy. I've done everywhere, and I've done everywhere from Iceland to Spain, but I haven't done Italy or Portugal. You need to go to Italy. <laughs> when you mentioned Paris, I. Uh, I I wanted to do Italy. I almost did it. It was just because of the train part. That one didn't work out well because I went down as far as Croatia. Okay. And I had to get back to Brussels, so I had to pick a path. And that's when I went back up through Austria and into Switzerland. Because Italy, you kind of have to go back down around. Yeah. Again. And it's a slow train. There's no speed train running through to connect it. So that was kind of the, the, the point. But I didn't go. But Xenia, too, I didn't want to go without her. Same as I went to England, but I never did London because she's always wanted to go. So I want to save that for us to have together. So mm -hmm. uh, Isle of Man was one of my bucket lists and uh, Liechtenstein because I always had an obsession with tiny little micro countries and small <laughs> areas. So I always love going off the beaten path. I always wanted to go where nobody else goes. So Well, then we're still going to go to Vatican. Then if yes. you want to go in the big micro I, I know. That's a, yeah, yeah, they're in Monaco. So <laughs> I'm getting there. I will get them. But, yeah, those are – Belarus I really want to see. I'm really excited to go to Belarus, so we'll probably the next time we go, I'm definitely going because they've relaxed yeah. the visa now. You don't need one uh, if you stay three days or five days. Yeah, for Canadians, uh, if yeah. you travel, you don't need visa now. Yeah, but you can only fly in. You can't take a car or you can't uh, do it by train. Because Belarus is funny because all the countries that left during Soviet time left for more freedom. Belarus left Russia because they didn't. They felt Russia was getting too liberal. So it's the truest form of what the Soviet Empire looked like when it was still thriving. Mm -hmm. Back so, in the day. Yeah, so that's mine, I guess, would be there. Yeah, as I mentioned, uh, Lysandra mentioned London was always my uh, bucket list place uh, since I, I was in, in school because um, my school was more like they taught English since grade one, which back there, back then, <laughs> at the beginning of independence and of Soviet times wasn't uh, so often. Uh, and they always taught us British English and always talked about England. So yeah. it always has been um, my bucket list number one since I ever <laughs> was small. But I always, as I said, I, I would want to go to Cuba uh, just because mm -hmm. of the so different culture. Um, in Canada, Newfoundland is my go-to this summer. <laughs> Uh, I have seen so many pictures and so many videos. I watch it every time I I need some inspiration. I I, I look for uh, pictures from Newfoundland. Uh, I would love I would love to go, and it's the only uh, it's the only province that yep. I haven't been to uh, in Canada. So that's uh, I have to check it off of my bucket list too, and then go to territories. <laughs> yeah, ter I don't know the provinces, but I really want to go to the territories. I yeah. really want to get to the yeah. territories. None of it would be cool. Have you been to any yet? No, I haven't. No. No, I. It, it's I don't know. It seems like that uh, final frontier feel to it, you know. Yeah. yeah. Oh. And uh, my last one probably is uh, Southern uh, Europe. I would like to do a drive through, starting uh, in Portugal and and probably in Lisbon, and just going all the way through to Italy <laughs> by car, all down uh, the coast along the sea. Exenia is not car. the driver. She doesn't, but she's very good at looking at a map and thinking everything we can see <laughs> on the map. And we'll probably get there in a day. <laughs> I would like You're to driving. rent a small red. Yeah. I would like to rent a small red Fiat and just go from Lisbon up until Rome. So that'd be good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then we can either pay the four hundred thousand euro penalty to return the car there, or, or <laughs> the, the day. Just buy the car. Well, at that point, that's exactly what you do: buy it, and sell it when you get there. Yeah, it would be good. I oh. uh, could include uh, Gibraltar at the same time, and, uh, yeah. and I, I just think it would be a fun thing. Probably, I don't know if with kids, but who knows? After after mm -hmm. being for a week without a hotel in Iceland, <laughs> maybe, maybe yes. But uh, I think this one's <laughs> gonna push the envelope. I think. I think we'll just do it. Who on. knows? So, yeah, those. So those are my uh, bucket list items for sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, well, thank you very much for coming yeah. over, um, and it was such a pleasure to have you. Uh, Hope you're not as nervous now as you were <laughs> Definitely not. the stream. It was so nice meeting you guys and talking face you to too. face, as it were. I hope we were okay for you. For uh, the, we're still adjusting and getting used to this, so I hope oh, it worked. Great. And uh, maybe we'll get have you back again sometime if you don't mind. Yep. 
For sure. I'd love to. Oh, that's Perfect. A, a pleasure. Awesome. It's so nice to have great people to work with. And you're that example of that. And it's really what's made a hard experience here so much more enjoyable. Mm -hmm. Thank you very I much. I like this community. Yes. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Thank you. Well, so um, is there any last words you want to talk, say to anybody for your channel and uh, about it? Uh, anybody last shout out or anything else you'd like to add before you leave us? Yeah, just come on by and leave a comment because I really do try to comment to everybody's stuff. And Do you put a link to your blog as well on your videos? I do, yes. That's what I thought. So, yeah, definitely, guys, you have to check that out as well. So yeah, it goes back to 2010. There's a lot of good past reading there as well. So. <laughs> I, I think that's so amazing. I love how you've evolved through it. It's a it's a great story to see where it started and, and where you are now. So thank you. Well, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and we have you now on Twitter and everything else as well. So please keep in touch and we'll definitely have to do this again soon. Thanks, guys. Have a good night. You too. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Well, oh. that was our guest. Amazing <laughs> down the rabbit hole travel. Please, if you haven't gone uh, supporting yet, uh, yeah. please go over and check out her channel, her uh, blog, our Twitter, and all the other social uh, media network uh, profiles. Uh, she's amazing. As you've seen, uh, her travel blog is amazing. Lots of uh, tips and tricks on traveling, on destinations and places. Uh, a really entertaining uh, read for you. Uh, Dr. Stein. Eckberg was asking if we can make it a link. Uh, yep, yeah, uh, just a second, and I will do that. Um, just wanted to mention that Gregory Salvatore was saying that he went to Sicily in 2016 and want to go back desperately. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's a, that's a great location, too. Hello, I'm Trunk. Uh, you just missed yes. our guest feature today, <coughs> but... Uh, don't fret, you can look at it afterwards, yep. after the live stream ends. The video is going to be up and running on our channel, so you can go back and check it out, the parts that you have missed. Please leave a like and comment below if you have been on the live stream or not. Uh, uh, please do so after it uploads up on our channel as well. And this is the great part, because everybody here, well, everybody, I should say a lot, has come from the I'm a Creator list, and this is what is built together, and this is what we want to kind of expand on now is taking the I'm Creator to the next level, mentioning it so new people can join in, but at the same time, too, building to the next level of getting to know each other better and, and building, like, these stronger connections. Because the wave will always kind of fluctuate, but the, the people we're getting to know here more, this community, I really want to build with you guys and see you guys for a long time. I want to be watching your videos many, 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 many years from now I uh, want to be following you guys and your stories. So definitely, this uh, it's a pleasure to have you all. I seen uh, Riz Rizorian Buck. I'm so glad you're here again, and we definitely got to get you on sometime. I'm sure you got a lot of stories for us. Uh, uh, we got to do that in the near future. Actually, we'll get in touch through Twitter or something like that. Doctor Stein. Eckberg, too. I would also like to have you on sometime soon if you would be interested. It would be great to have you. Uh, Dr. Eckberg is a new um, member of our I'm Creator community. Yes. So if you haven't gone and checked him out, please, uh, since he just joined, I think, last week, uh, please go and do so. Uh, it's really interesting things and really fun and entertaining thumbnails. <laughs> yes, yes, that's true. So go check out the yeah. thumbnails. It, you'll have, uh, you have. And a he's lot. very engaging. Uh, very well. Sp it's very uh, comfortable spoken. Sometimes when you think doctor, you're like, oh god, I hope I get all of this. But he's actually very, very, uh, very well spoken, friendly, uh, great demeanor for video. I'm so busy this month, but let's keep in touch. Definitely. Sure. Uh, uh, we're uh, just trying to schedule and plan out our live streams right now. So uh, yeah. uh, we have already a couple of uh, guests in line uh, that we have planned for the near future. So uh, if you just uh, would want to do that later on, we definitely yep. can do that for sure. That would be great and amazing. Well, for our last segment of our last 15 minutes or so, if again, if you have any questions about videos uh, mm -hmm. or photos, any uh, tips and tricks about editing or social media or graphics, uh, anything technical or oh. not. Uh, <laughs> oh, we got St. Auto in. Welcome, guys. Welcome. So glad to have you guys. Oh, and Carol say as well. Oh, husband and wife team. I like that. It's always good to see. Uh, Alan Oxid Oxidine. 
great to have you here. Another great supporter. So many great supporters here. Well, we're at 20, guys. Hey, we're getting bigger by the moment. I love it. So good to have you all here. And we had a great time with our guest tonight. You guys definitely got to check her out. Please, please, please check her out. I Down just posted a link uh, in the chat, uh, the direct link to her channel. Uh, so just uh, scroll up and press on that, uh, and you can check her channel right away. There. She was amazing. Yeah, I'm yeah, also I, gonna yeah. post a link to her blog so you can go mm -hmm. and check. It she out. she is like your twin. I swear to God, almost everything she's saying, I like. I, I'm thinking in my head. I've heard Xenia say this many <laughs> times. I, I see so many similarities. Yeah, I I think uh, what what we are on the same page as well is is being uh, focused on the things that are important to us uh oh. like the travel that is important for us you gotta sacrifice some other things in order to be able to do that i seen a question about my gear from camera uh camera time yes i use sony it's a sony a6000 um yeah, it's not the newest one but i honestly i i really don't even want to upgrade because i'm so used to it uh, i have a couple other lenses uh interchangeable lenses that i have uh i have uh I have one prime, a 50 prime lens, and uh, two zoom lenses. Um, uh, yeah, 1655 and, and 210 millimeter one, uh, which I use depending on what I'm shooting. Uh, I'm really happy with it. It's, it's a great camera, uh, great detail, easy to handle, easy to go around. Uh, it's not big. It's a SLR which is a mirrorless camera. And I think it's quite enough for what it can offer uh, since uh, full frame cameras often are very heavy and very big. Um, so I wouldn't want to have it on my travels <laughs> uh, in a big bag for sure. Uh, the one thing that I am very excited to see or at least to see the reviews is the upcoming Canon uh, mirrorless camera. Uh, Canon has been obviously the leader uh, lately <laughs> in in producing the cameras the full frame ones uh so i would be excited to see what it can offer in the mirrorless uh, camera here and uh maybe then i would reconsider um, upgrading but for now i'm happy with what i have uh camera time says their sensors are top notch uh yes it it is it's it's a, it performs very well in a low light uh very little noise uh i can go in iso up to thousands and uh it's it's still not going to bring in any noise which is amazing and not very many cameras can do that this is the camera that i use i believe i've taken it out of the bag once before but it's easier to see it now that it's set up uh this is the dji osmo and i can show you in a moment when it's torn down but i always use it with the z axis as you can see here and that's for stabilization when walking to light running. And of course, because it's control, it, it is off of an actual drone, the camera up here, the memory chip goes inside the head, but you control it with a cell phone. There's no uh, digital pad. You can turn on, you can record, but you can't view anything unless you have it connected to a cell phone via Wi-Fi, which is not always the most practical. So it is kind of a, it's it's not an easy camera to work with and it's not great for if you need a shot in a split second because it does take about 40 seconds to get everything up and running you can uh, put it on sleep mode but that shortens it down to about 20 seconds but for cinematic bang for the buck i bought this plus the selfie stick which of course proprietary stuff is always super expensive four batteries and all this i think it cost me 1200 canadian so for the amount of stabilization i get out of it in 4k shooting it's equal to a stabilization setup alone, just excluding the camera. That's probably three to four grand. So that's what I, uh, let me just, I'll bring up one picture of it without the Z axis just to show you that. Well, here's the Z axis on its own. Uh, that's the attachment for, uh, uh, for the steady cam. It, is, it has a gimbal into it, but this is solely the Z axis is for walking or light running. And, uh dji osmo and i bet you it's gonna bring like i say there's an attachment for the phones now that's amazing like for cell phones um this is what mine looks like without it so it's quite small it actually when it's done oh oh because it's a dji picture so it won't let it go is it that way. three axes gimbal model caps is asking no i bought it literally two weeks before that one came out the three x I haven't heard the best things about it, that it was worth the money, but I can always just buy the camera and keep the handle. So I can always do that later on, which is something I might consider because you can also buy another remote control 
uh, not well, not a remote control, but it's wire connected, and you can use just the the gimbal head itself. So I might do that, and then I'll have two cameras, and maybe use one for like shooting action shots and stuff like that while I'm filming with the other. As I was saying before, the trick took his uh, floating videos with driving a car yeah. <laughs> while taking a video uh, safely. <laughs> uh, but that's what uh, lots of times uh, gives that nice panning look to the videos, uh, if you notice that. But people that are shooting with cell phones, I think this one's from, uh, don't quote me on it, but I think 300 bucks now. It's the same handle as mine, but this one is made specifically to hold your cell phone, so it gives you the stabilization. So if you're shooting with a Galaxy S, not S8 or anything like that, or iOS, uh, whatever they're at now, 9, or yeah, that this really makes a huge difference. It turns your phone into basically a cinematic. And now, of course, with the snap-on lenses you can buy, <laughs> you can shoot cinema quality off your phone. It's unbelievable how much the technology has come along. I have two questions from Camera Time. Can you add other cameras to it, or is it just for phone? And also, Bottle Caps is commenting that you can buy Mavic for the same money. But what do you have to say? Uh, uh, yes, you can buy Mavic for the same money, for sure. The thing is, is that first for us especially, because we're a business, we're shooting weddings, we're shoot, shooting inside a lot, uh, outside. It, it made more sense to go with this, just because it would pay for itself a lot quicker. The Maverick's a good addition to it. I love it. I have nothing but great things to say for Mavic. It's just that you can't use it as a day-to-day -day camera. That's the only thing, and we needed a day-to-day -day workhorse for shooting most of our video. Also, in an indoor uh, activity, yes. uh, it would be quite yeah. quite limited. It's not impossible, but it, it would require licensing. One of our videos that we have, Maximo's uh, Baptism, were uh, inside that church with all the beautiful lighting. No, I, I'll get it. Yeah. I was saying that uh, you, you can walk across the crowd holding it with a selfie stick. You actually get that feeling of floating, almost like a drone is in the room, but there's no worry. It's not. You don't even have to bother tethering the drone. It's already connected to the stick, so... Uh, yeah, there was a question from uh, earlier about, uh, from Nelson Wise uh, that he's going to invest in a camera. What would be a good camera to invest in? Um, there's lots of answers that are really great about uh, the, the best camera is the one that is with you. I agree. Uh, um, there, there are a couple of things to consider. First and foremost, what do you need it for? Um, you know, like a great example, especially like for example, with people buying lenses as well. Uh, if you are gonna shoot, uh, let's say sporting events. Okay, you need a fast lens. Uh, you don't need a huge 600 millimeter telezoom lens that people use for uh, bird watching, for example, and and people and um, pictures of wildlife. Yeah, uh, so that is a thing. Also, do you need a full frame or maybe mirrorless is enough? As I was saying, full frame is great, but at the same time, it's big, heavy, bulky. Uh, do you want to drag it around? Is it more something that you're going to be using on a tripod? Or you're gonna be handheld, and you know, can can you do that for hours on end? So the first and, and foremost is why do you want the camera? What are you mainly mainly? What are you gonna be using it for? Uh, then after you establish that, a thing about the budget that you can afford. What would be the range of the budget uh, that you're planning for? Uh, and uh, definitely look up for the reviews in, in within that budget. For the purpose of uh, of the camera that you want to buy, but definitely top two things: what do you want to use it for, and what is your budget? Nowadays, though, uh, cameras uh, there are such a big um, vast variety that you can choose from different budgets, different needs. <coughs> um, you know, even the phones have a great ability to take. Um, Oh, yeah. To take pictures like the new Google uh, Pixel phone, for example, probably can replace a couple of good cameras already. So. Apple and them are starting to shoot their own commercials using their own phone and stuff right. like that. It's it's really come leaps and bounds. Yeah. And the aftermarket lenses that they're coming out with now is it, it, it's incredible. It's you, nobody would ever have thought. But we say that with cell phones every year. We always say, I never thought they could put that much in a phone. Mm -hmm. And every year they seem to up the ante. And I mean, they've become. Cameras are definitely a high priority on them now, so it's definitely a, a user market for cameras. Well, my main thing was that uh, that it would be light uh, and it would be good in low light. Uh, so uh, it is light. I, uh, as we were talking about traveling today, uh, 
this camera has been through all my travels and through hours and hours of end mm. going through uh, Copenhagen or climbing up the hill in Iceland. Uh, Getting it, left at an airport, <laughs> which is a yeah. it's because it is the camera I bought her when we got married. And on my second trip, I was in the Isle of Man. For any of you who don't know, that's the little tiny island between Scotland and Ireland. And I was talking to my beautiful wife and saying, I can't wait to get home soon. It was only two more days. And got on the plane and didn't realize when I was entering my bag, I had taken her camera out and actually left it at the airport. And if you're ever going to do that in an airport, Island of, Isle of Man is the one to do it at because it's such a small little place. I called the security guard when I got to Liverpool. He told me not to worry that somebody would never take it. They'll return it. And sure enough, they've had it in their hands and they sent it over to us and we had the camera back, what, three days later? It was yes. in Canada? It was never touched so, and the way it was left, that's how it came. And, and I, I never surprised. felt so bad in my life. I kept telling her I wish I would have lost my passport instead of this camera. So Yeah. Um, uh, our guest uh, is commenting that she has, <clears throat> excuse me, she has a Zhiyun Smooth Q gimbal for her iPhone. Uh, she says it's pretty good mid-range for price for those of you who are not sure about gimbals. Uh, yeah, as Andrew was saying, uh, that's what gives that nice look to it. The, <laughs> the nice effect that we are all, all are looking for and even to the simplest videos or the vlogging, uh, it, it makes a difference of that smooth uh, capture. And Camaro Time is saying about the Isle of Man for the race, exactly. Uh, any of you never seen it? This motorcycle race is insane. They do thirty-seven miles in seventeen minutes. They circle the country on windy Ireland-type roads with no speed limits, going through towns. It's kind of it's a deadly race. There has been some uh, really bad accidents, but it is something to see. They shut the town down. I think it's ten days or something like that. One week for laps and one week for the race. But yeah. No yeah, speed limits. That's no, crazy. And you would never think in the Irish Sea, it's surrounded by palm trees and everything. It's 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 a uh, kind of a bit like we were saying in Iceland a while ago. It doesn't feel like it should be there. It feels like it's yeah. uh, like so, like Martian inhabited or something. <laughs> uh, it, it definitely has a feel all its own. <laughs> Matt Kukarigan also have a smooth uh, cute gimbal as well. There you go. Oh, yeah, there's lots of attachments now available for your phones and stuff. I. Uh, Use, using different phones, I find from all the phones that I have tried, uh, I had Motorola uh, that I loved the quality of the picture. So it was so fast and so crisp, even in low light, in, in dusk. Uh, I, I have a different phone right now and I, I, I miss that part of that phone because it, it was really, really good quality and, and wasn't as expensive as Google Pixel now, for example. So if it's something that you're looking for, the Motorola phones I find are good. Do you have your phone with you on uh, St. Otto said they had tweeted us, I don't, I don't, I, I, but I can't seem to spring it up here. I, I, she is the Twitter expert. Um, is it in a message or tweet? I, he said he just said that he sent us a message in Twitter. I did. You know, look at. Uh, they have the big red. Mill Hill mud mowers. I would love to gimbal, but I would be worried about what would happen to it because of what I do. Yeah, I, and I get that. And because a lawnmower, I know from experience, <laughs> they're not known for their great suspension. A gimbal can only compensate so much, but it's it's hard to say. It's it, it's uh, But in that one, yeah, that would be a tricky one. You almost, I guess, kind of got to just hold it in your hand and hope for the best. That would uh, be some great footage. Though. Oh, yeah. If you could mount it, because uh, what what DJI Osmo has, it has different mounts as well, like for your bike, for your car, and things like that. So I can only imagine what you could capture if you could mount it uh, yeah. on your vehicle. It, it, it would be amazing shots, just like a first-person view, so to say. I, I think that would be worth trying. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, for sure. Uh, Camaro time. I do not understand Twitter. LOL. <laughs> you're not the only one. Me too. <laughs> yeah, when you're talking on Twitter, mostly it's me. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> I I just never really got into it. It wasn't my thing. So thank God that Xenia did. So 
I see a few of the messages and notifications. I'll, I will be checking all of our uh, feeds and the socials after the live stream. So if you have any comments or you, you have questions left unanswered, uh, please tweet us um, or message privately and I'll answer them. Milhill Munmore says, I got to boom off the back. Yeah, that's pretty cool like that. So I, I, I love how you do it. I like my hat goes off to you because I just see you're filming and I, I know you. that's not something easy to do. So. I'm, I really do have appreciation for how you do it. Bottle Cops is saying that he would love to have been a fly on the wall when you lost my camera. Yeah, yeah. Surprisingly, <laughs> I was very calm. <laughs> uh, I think I was more worried about uh, uh, Andrew than the camera. I mean, uh, obviously, I would. Uh, I'm not. I'm not very a little inside. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I'm not very much a realistic person. Uh, it would be more uh, upsetting because it was uh, my husband's gift to me as a, as a wedding gift for me. So that would be the part that would be more upsetting. But uh, to me, items are only items. You know, we have lots of things and they come and go. And, you know, uh, so yes, it would be upsetting, but it would be a tragedy. I just wanted him to get safe at home and was on the way home. Uh, so uh, th that was more my concern than the camera. <laughs> but I was very surprised when it actually arrived here in three days and yeah. wasn't touched because uh, I didn't even I didn't even hope it would come back. Um, but uh, so that was a great surprise. It's a small honest community, but it was still at an airport, and you do have travelers that didn't grow up there and aren't as honest as they are. And uh, yeah, I was expecting the worst. And I had never felt so bad in my entire life. Like there's some things that we do the man thing and we shrug it off because we try to act like it doesn't bother, but that I really truly felt bad about. So I yeah. was glad when they returned it. So but it's back. It have a have traveled yeah. lots of uh, <laughs> yeah. lots of places, have with withstood and without us. Yeah, yeah without and without us, have withstood all the weather <laughs> changes and cold and yep. all that. Uh, so yes. for sure. It's been a lot of countries. It's like a jacket Xenia had bought me for when we got married, my black leather jacket, and the sleeves are starting to let go. And I was never a person for patches, but I hate to get rid of it because it's traveled so much with me. And pretty much every country you've seen out of Europe has been there. I've uh, used it as a pillow. I've used it as a blanket. I've used it to cover up my kids traveling. And I, I really don't want to get rid of it. So I'm actually thinking of making the leap and putting, getting proper patches put onto it, motorcycle style, I guess. And because uh, I don't want to let it go for that simple reason, I think I'm more sentimental to it than anything. So I think we're more about reading and having experiences, and that's what, yeah. how we started this uh, stream today of talking about experiences and travel. True. Uh, we value more the experience than the items, uh, creating memories, making memories with family and friends and with each other than the items around us. And that's what we talked at the beginning, and and that's we could. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, how we got to attach to stuff. Well. It's amazing, you know. That's true. There's certain things like that that we we just take for granted, uh, and that's why it's not the money part into it. It's what they uh, what they've done for us or what they've been to us. So it's um, I I don't know. I like I say. Eventually, my mother said I should get it turned into like a throw pillow or something like that that we can keep in the house. She just doesn't want me to wear it anymore because the sleeves are all the the, the the elbows are all coming out of it. While going to work early. Carol saying thank you so much for coming by. Such a pleasure to have you guys. Definitely want to have you guys on sometime too soon. Yeah, we'll be ending uh, our stream soon too. Yeah. So uh, RPM's just, uh, taking off as well. Have thank a great you very night. much for coming. I just wanted to remind you again for those who are leaving that if you want to be a guest on our stream on your yep. or your video be featured, uh, please uh, tweet or if you don't have a uh, Twitter, just uh, find a way to message us. Uh, we'll leave all the links and our email below after the stream so you can check that out. I want to run something by you guys too. I want to give you food for thought. I was thinking one or two nights a week. Like maybe we'll have like a Tech Tuesday or something where it will be a two hour that you guys just come and we're just going to discuss all kinds of technique, uh, cameras, the whole works, and just focus specifically on that. And I was wondering what you guys might think of that. So please leave us a comment, any thoughts you have, and like that you guys can have time then like to know when it's coming on for your questions. We don't have all the answers either, but somebody in the chat room might have an answer for you. And we can kind of pull uh, – 
pull those together. So maybe a night just specifically dedicated to that. So. Yeah, please remember it's a co it's a co-op. Yes. Uh, it, it's not our expert opinion. It, ex it is exchange of skills and experiences. Yeah. So anytime anybody has anything to add or I have a question to our guest or add to what we're talking about, <laughs> about uh, any technicalities, please do. Come here, time. Come here. You're doing great. You're doing great. You don't, you're too hard on yourself. Yes, and by the way, I loved your pictures on on uh, Flickr. Uh, loved the car pictures. The as I as I was telling you, the close up vintage car images are poster worthy. I I really enjoyed uh, enjoyed that. I, I I think you should do more of that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I I really enjoyed that. So thank you for letting me look at them. And it was really nice. Mill Hill Mun Mowers, congrats on your numbers. You're doing great. Well, you as well, my friend, and you've been such a great support. One of that's right from the get go. We really, we never forgot that stuff, and we hope we've been just as good a support to you as well. Dr. Stan Engberg is asking, uh, that, yeah. do you have editing tips too? Yes, actually, last uh, Friday we did a live stream, and for for the first time we did a feature of the video of bottle caps, where we slightly touched on uh, editing suggestions and and technical stuff about uh, video editing. Uh, so definitely, uh, yeah. we can either pick <laughs> yeah. or uh, get your video uh, that we can uh, look through. And don't worry, we're not uh, no. judging or anything. It, we're just uh, trying we're to suggest things and if you have any particular questions about uh, photo or video editing then one definitely can try answering those and we're, we're, just remember that we're picking up we're it's hard to explain but we're not replacing I'm a creator we want to we want to build on it now now that a lot of us have gotten to know each other we want to keep that same community that brought us together but now kind of also expand into other regions of it and that's where it's getting to know each other more uh, uh, as an advice channel working together and stuff like that. It's all based on that, that original community that we started with, I guess is the best way to put it. it, it yeah. You know, the, it helped build us and bring us all together. And now we kind of want to help do our part to help solidify all of us. We definitely, like I said before, want to be seeing everybody, each other's videos two years down the road, five years down the road, and not just a fly by night. So uh, that's why it's such a pleasure having you guys. So, we're just looking for new ways to kind of make that more of our, uh, uh, an obtain uh, more of the goal of our channel or the mission of it. So, so yeah, if you want to get in touch, uh, once again, uh, just tweet us or message us, yep. uh, or leave a comment and, uh, we would like to hear more from you. Uh, if you have any tips or questions about technical, uh, things we, as Andrew was said, uh, we would love to do uh, maybe a tutorial or something like yep. that. If you have something in particular, we can do a share screen with a tutorial. Exactly. Uh, so uh, we can look into that. Yep. Any suggestions? Welcome. And thank, thank you, you for, for your patience. Oh, sorry. Yep. sorry that. <laughs> thank you for your patience with us. As you can see, we're still getting our sea legs and all of this, and we couldn't ask for a more supportive audience. You guys have been absolutely fantastic. Uh, uh, Oh, uh, Gregory Salva, uh, you're so welcome, and you're another one too, guys. Uh, let us know if you want to be on. Uh, we have we're going to be opening up. We're going to be doing this more, so definitely message us on Twitter. For those of us who already did, uh, we'll uh, get in touch uh, yep. very soon, and we'll make this happen, guys. You guys have a really great night. Thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure having you guys. Thank you, down the rabbit hole travel. You were so amazing. I, we really enjoyed having you here. So, yes, but get the kids to bed. we got to go do the same. And uh, definitely would love to have you back on again really soon. And so. don't forget to check us out on Twitter and on here every day and see if we are live streaming. Yes. So definitely. let's keep in touch. Take care, guys. Bye. Have a good night. Thank you so much for joining us. Bye now.